can be exciting. The brightness. Call it brilliant. Valenti. Uh, a pretty interesting opportunity for us to kind of uh, give the fans a little breakdown of what's going on, uh, maybe in terms of the competitive environment that we've been watching over the past three rounds. It's really been all about Mad Mike. 
uh, from round one until the most recent round uh, at Ebisu where we had another victory. So he's kind of more or less running away with the championship, but now we find ourselves at a very large track, very fast with some new drivers that are in the mix uh, trying to challenge Mad Mike. What have you uh, taken from the, the season so far? Well, you're right. It is. It has been the Mad Mike show so far. He has sort of unseated Andy Gray. Andy Gray was that guy before. He was the one that was winning everything. He has three championships under his belt at FD Japan. And he's sort of had a little bit of trouble this year, especially at round one, car troubles. Didn't really go according to plan. At Ebisu's home track, he had, uh, I think he went out a little bit earlier than he would probably have liked to there. But Mad Mike has been very consistent. And we spoke before about how consistency was and is always so important. You know, we've heard of drivers that didn't actually win a single round within a, a championship year, but won the championship. So consistently placing on the podium or consistently being close to the top of the finishing la you know, ladder, let's say, right. at each event, you can, you can run away with the championship. And Mike has three wins right now. And I don't think we've had three wins, less even three consecutive wins in FD Japan, maybe except Andy at some point, yeah. right? I, I don't know the, the exact history of that or the record books, but I feel like that there was something kind of like that in Andy's reign during that time. But Mad, Mad Mike has been certainly the most consistent. Let's talk a little bit about the, the track here, Ryan, and maybe break down some of the judging criteria. You guys spent some time this morning talking to the drivers in the driver's meeting about what you guys are looking for. Obviously, we've adopted very similar criteria, almost exact maybe with one minor little adjustment with with regards to the deceleration map, but I see, it seems like you guys are starting to implement that yeah. now. So maybe let's do a little bit of a, a quick uh, track breakdown along with some criteria. Yeah, this track is a little bit different than our typical layout. We can't see the run-up at all. We have cameras, but with our own eyes, it's really difficult to see the entire track. So we can see the latest initiation point from where we're sitting. And then we have outside zone one, now, outside zone one is key to getting the rest of this course. Because this track is such a, it's an on-throttle track. There's only one small slowdown zone on this track. It's a wide track. It's a fast track. And it's a very grippy surface as well. We had Mad Mike coming up here after the first practice session laughing, saying, my first two laps, I understeered through the whole thing. He said he couldn't even get the car sideways. Um, he had to adjust tire pressures. He had to adjust suspension settings and turn up the boost as well to try to get the car to perform and he, clearly he has figured it out but all of those things make this track very original and very very different from here it doesn't look like there's much of a um, a gradient difference either but it's actually a, quite a bit of a hill out there as well and that changes how drivers have to approach this so turn one outside zone one very common for drivers to go off there two three four wheels way wide you can see rubber uh, right at outside zone one where people have gone off during the three practice sessions we had this morning. Outside zone two, you really need to come in with speed and transition aggressively to get the car out to outside zone two. And you can see it outside zone two as well. A lot of tires off. There's a lot of dirt there. It used, to, <laughs> used to be grass when we got here earlier this morning, but after three practice sessions, it's been torn up quite a bit. And then from there, the drivers dive into inside clip one and then finish wide at outside zone three. So it's a uh, it's a very, like I said, it's fast, and the drivers need to be very committed, but also very precise. With the speeds they're traveling and the, the angle that they're throwing aggressively, it's very easy to go off track and get yourself in a dangerous situation. We have had ca cars hit the wall here in previous seasons, previous years. Today, nothing, uh, nothing of the sort occurred. But looking at the rubber on the track from the practice sessions, you can see that a lot of people were making mistakes. Thankfully, they were on the inside as opposed to out wide, but it's uh, it's a tricky one, and it's hard to get it just right. Even Mad Mike earlier, when he was getting zone one and two properly, he was overshooting inside clip one. So it's very technical and fast. It's um, it's not an easy layout to get, despite its its shortness and simplicity. Talk a little bit about the philosophy behind how you guys are placing these outer zones. We've been here at this course a number of times before. Sometimes you guys will place them off the track. They're off the track now. Sometimes you'll place them on the edge of the track. What should fans know about that, and what do the drivers know about in terms of filling those outer zones? Yeah, in practice, we put them way wide because we were trying to minimize how often the cones were getting hit. Um, on the screen right now, you can see the 3-2-1 cone, so the yellow 3-2-1, the drivers need to be initiated by that very last yellow initiation cone, which we can see from our seating position here. But 
the the layout the way we lay the cones out is hopefully wide enough that the drivers know where the outside zone is in re in reference to the edge of the track or the rumble strip but far enough out that they can drop a tire maybe two tires and not hit the cones every single time the size of this track and the fact that it, it, it was a, a formula one track means that there's a lot of space for error a lot of room typically uh, for runoff which means that our safety vehicles are parked pretty far away for them to be able to come drive all the way over to where those clips are and zones it takes longer than we would like so we try to minimize the amount of cone hits that's why the cones are a little bit further off they're not right on the edge of the track so they don't get hit uh, at every single lap especially on zone one like i said people have been overshooting that it's very easy because the drivers come around pretty much blind and when they initiate they have to hope that they're on the right line and as they come around the corner they'll see that outside zone and it's either they're on the right line or they're not and it's really hard to adjust you can't really grab the handbrake there to try to adjust if you do the car slows down to the point where you're not going to make it up the hill and then uh, be able to get to outside zone two so it's uh it's a track you need to get right from the beginning and if you don't it can be really really hard to make up that time. now you guys have um just come off the event in seattle i was obviously there with you as well one of the things that i think that stood out in qualifying to me um that we tried to get across as much as we possibly could but it's hard sometimes because it's not in everybody's front of mind all the time is that when you guys are placing line angle and style there may be areas on the course where you have a preponderance of the points available in in seattle for example there was a lot available there line and angle wise on the big bank just because of the length of it and also the importance of that have you guys done anything here in terms of the points allocation that fans should know about when thinking about judging at home for themselves line and angle are worth 30 points as they are in the u.s and we only have four scored areas here on this track so it means we have to divide 30 points up into four sections what we've done is given 10 points to what we felt were the more important parts on the track and that's outside zone one and outside zone two they're vital to getting the rest of the course if you get both of those the rest should kind of fall into place so we've done 10 for outside zone one 10 for outside zone two five for inside clip one and five for the final outside zone three and and one thing i think that you mentioned to me before the broadcast uh we talked a little bit about earlier is that this course for the most part is basically all throttle and there are areas uh, at least one area in particular that'll probably be come into uh possible uh note tomorrow and actually i think if we go back to the world championship round here we actually had an incident uh a deceleration incident from outside zone two to inside clip one is that the marked decel zone for you guys yeah that's correct it's like you said earlier this is the first time we've implemented the decel map or any kind of detail decel zone in japan and that's just because we generally don't bring everything to japan immediately you know things that we have rules regulations we, we start them off in the u.s we use them in the u.s and then once it's established there we will uh slowly bring things to japan and it's because of the new drivers that we have in japan the drivers that maybe aren't totally accustomed to the fd system and we don't want to overwhelm them but we feel like we've gone through a season and a half now and it's about time that we can introduce that get the drivers comfortable with those decel areas and and get them driving with that mentality just like we have in the u.s so yeah we have one decel zone from outside zone two to inside clip one and although it's there we're not saying you're, it's an area where you can get on the brakes and you know really slow down quickly. It should be used as a, a kind of a, with a lot of angle is what we prefer. We saw a few drivers doing it in practice where they throw a really big angle at outside zone two and then get back on throttle almost immediately for inside clip one. And it should be noticed that uh, if you're not in the local Japan area, you probably don't know this, but uh, we look like it looks like we're going to have fairly stable conditions weather-wise here this afternoon as we see our first driver come up, Kenji Yamanaka. But tomorrow, we are actually potentially going head-on into a typhoon that's coming off the east coast of Japan. So we'll keep you guys posted on if that changes competition for tomorrow. Kenji Yamanaka, our first driver up. You can see those three, two, one cones as he comes around the corner. He's now in the sight of the judges, hitting that second outer zone right into that first inside clip. And then powering through to that final outside zone, and you can see the green cones there off to the right-hand side, marking the finish line there where drivers can get off the gas and make their way back to the lineup. Ryan, after you're done uh, putting your scores in, let's take a look here. Our very first run of the day, you can see obviously we have implicated, excuse me, implemented the chicane here in, in Japan, and that is that 
right hand sweeper that you see coming into that first initiation point. Yeah, looking at Kenji here, like I was saying earlier, if you don't get yourself wide right away, it's going to be hard to correct that. So outside zone one, he was off a little bit. He did pretty well on two, but uh, it's really the beginning there that uh, that he missed. He did an all right job through the rest of the run, managed to get into inside clip one. So overall, not a bad run. All right, so Kenji Yamanaka, our first driver out. I think that's the first time we've seen him in FD Japan this year. He usually comes out to a handful of events. And we've got two rounds left to go with Okiabuki up in the mountains. Really interesting course uh, up at a ski resort in September. And then we kick things off for the finale in Okayama. Uh, really amazing track, uh, which will be in much different conditions to this. Last year, I think we, uh, or two years ago, we actually got a little bit of snow on race day. <laughs> So we'll see where this uh, drops in for Kenji Yamanaka, and it looks like it's going to be a 79 for run number one. Now, Ryan, one thing that I think a lot of people back in the States are, you know, talk about quite a bit is, you know, the difference in driving style between some of the U.S. drivers and Japanese drivers. Do you notice anything in particular? Is that taken into account, um, or are you guys expecting... Uh, to basically see a lot of the same driving. Yeah, it's it's something that I get asked about a lot of places I go in the world, and I like I tell everybody, I feel that the driving is very similar everywhere I go. It's just different cars and different um, judging systems, maybe. All right, so Tetsu Iha, our next driver up. You can see initiated at that third standing cone, reaching that back bumper onto that second outer zone. Ryan talked a lot about making sure you hit that first outside zone, and as you see him and his plume of smoke at the finish line there we'll take a look at the replay again we'll we'll slow it down a little bit here as he comes through the chicane you'll see the three two one yellow cones just in the background there and he is able to, to initiate right before that let's see how he does on this first outside zone now ryan what was the what was the edge of the course that you guys said for the outside zones was yeah, it the dirt the rumble strip would be in play uh, of course, outside zone two, there's just pavement on there. Uh, there's no rumble strip there, so it'd be the edge of the pavement. Uh, get your bumper close to inside clip one, and wide at outside zone three with your tire on the rumble strip as well. And remind me, talking about ba back wheels or talking about back bumper? Uh, rear, the tire itself. Okay. Yeah. Oh, let's see. All right, so waiting for scores to come in here. Ryan doing double duty as a judge and also our technical commentator. No girl on the ground this weekend, Ryan, so we won't be checking in with Lorette, but it'll just be uh, you and I up here. That'll be an interesting trip if we could bring Lorette out here sometime. And if you can see in the background there, you'll actually see some of the clouds coming over the mountains there. That's like the first part of the front, potentially, from what we are hearing. And it's supposed to come in pretty heavy tonight. 74 for Tetsuya Iha, falling right in line there in his run number one. We do have right around 40 drivers. We had a couple guys uh, get taken out of competition either by not showing or vehicle malfunction or one driver, Matthew Hill, actually had a physical injury that caused him not to make this event. So we are down three drivers from our 42. It looks like we've got 39 drivers. So there will be seven overall drivers uh, not making it into tomorrow's competition, depending on what happens. But our next driver up is Yoshinori Shinozaki with TSJ All-Stars and Drift Magazine heading through that initiation point. Gets into Drift a little bit late there, trying to reach out to that first outer zone. Better job there. A little bit tight, and he has to make an adjustment, pull some angle out, and not really driving straight there, but not able to fill that last outside zone. Certainly going to be a big deduction there. And Ryan, I think, believe that you're doing a line, right? So certainly... It, did not follow the line towards the latter part of the course. Yeah, I believe I got a zero hand signal from the other judges, so I believe we're going to be giving them incomplete, unfortunately. Wasn't able to get through there with angle, drifting properly. That would kind of fall under the incomplete or, um, yeah, not a full drift through there. Yeah, he was pretty straight. He was trying. You could hear that there was a, maybe an error, an issue with the car, you know, maybe a mechanical issue. So looks like scores are starting to drop here for Yoshinori Shinozaki with the JZX 100 Mark II and it is confirmed it will be an incomplete which is equivalent to a zero. And we'll move on to our next uh -oh. driver. Kazumi Takashi with TMS Racing. He's also in a JZX 100 Mark II. 
has been given the green light. Leaving the chicane, which will also be implemented, and the primary reason that it is implemented is for tandem competition. Gets his initiation started there right at the third standing cone. Really important here to reach out. He does not get out to that first outside zone. Better on that outside zone too, but looks like he's going to overshoot that first inside flip. And he is able to get out to that second outer zone, but obviously it looks like for the line judge, which would be you, Ryan, there'll be some deductions there. And uh, as fans of the series know, we've got each judge broken up and judging individual criteria. So we have a line judge, we have an angle judge, and a style judge. Speed is uh, not a factor other than it's cool. <laughs> so what was the takeaway here from uh, Takahashi? Unfortunately, he missed outside zone one. Did okay on two. He was a little late getting in there and then was uh, wide on inside clip one, which, like I said earlier, is really easy to do. It's really easy to overshoot that one, and it can happen pretty quickly. Now, Ryan, I, I, I said this a little bit in jest, but I said that speed is cool, but... What are the reasons that we don't use speed in Formula Drift as a judging criteria, and does that even really have an impact on how you guys do your judging? It, the main reason is because of the variable weather that we get. We, we, we can't predict weather. We don't know what's going to happen throughout an event. And the main issue in qualifying is if it starts off dry and then rains halfway through, we've already set a speed that drivers need to attain to get full points. Now if it starts to rain, there's no way for the rest of the drivers to attain that speed. So then they would be at a disadvantage. What do we do? We have to scratch speed altogether. So it's also, a, you know, becomes a, a race to initiation if you do it there, or if you do it over the long haul, then you have yep. to have some sort of function with that as well. That's another problem. So here we go, Kazuki Hayashi in the classic, to become a classic, 86. Finishing up his run here. We'll take a look at the replay once again. I was taking a look at the driver lineup here. Our old friend from uh, FD Asia made it out for this competition. Let's take a look as he leaves the chicane, heads down into the initiation area. You can see that wrapping turn. He gets a nice early initiation there, way before the third standing cone. No bon bonus points for that. But uh, Ryan unable to reach out to that first outer zone, it looked like there. Yes. And a little bit short, a little bit late on that second outer zone. Yep. Again, it's hard to be precise at this track, but the ones that, when they get it, it looks amazing. All right, so nobody breaking into the 80s or 90s just yet. We've got a pair of uh, 70, mid, mid to high 70 scores and a 69, and Kazuki Hayashi, our next driver, our driver that just performed his first run comes in at a 77 so right in the middle of the road so far and we'll be moving on to our next driver number 97 he goes by M but uh, his full name is M Atopan wait a second Kong. that's not M and that is not there we go there we go all right so it looks like we're skipping over M M did not make it so Tokuto Matsuyama our next driver up. I'm not sure if that is going to be a competition timeout for M or if it's going to be actually skipping run number one. We'll confirm that. As of right now, it is a no show. Yeah, hearing Kevin radio in, trying to find a reason for M not showing up. Maybe Kevin knows why. All right, so here we go. Moving on, nonetheless, Matsuyama and Team SD Garage and the JZX100 Chaser. Some understeer there, but yeah, he's got but a very late initiation. Very late there, and you can see he's going to overshoot just a little bit that inside clip. The line ever so important there. And Ryan, as you guys were spending a lot of time, we had uh, just about three hours of practice. What's, what do you notice here with this run with Matsuyama and, and the drivers that were really able to connect all those outer zones and inside clip? Well, you can see he had an issue right off the bat here before the initiation area even. It looked like the car was in an understeer situation where he couldn't get the car to rotate the front. It looked like it was pushing right here. You can see the front wheels turning. And he started drifting way, way beyond the latest initiation point. Now, typically that falls into the style category, but you guys also have 
the ability to market as an incomplete. Is that far enough down the road to be an incomplete for you? Okay, we'll talk to the guys here and see what they say. So it looks like some judges at least scoring it initially here as we wait for the final confirmation on whether or not that was past the line of a scored run. So tough start for Hokuto Motsuyama. A little bit of de deliberation here. They, they don't have to be uh, in a unanimous vote. A judge can give a zero. An individual judge can give a zero if he'd like and score the rest. It usually doesn't matter if one judge gives a zero, then that person is going to be uh, in a, a field of over 32 cars and have to make it up in a second run. Uh, but nonetheless, the judges do have that option. Hello? That's us over here. Beautiful Fuji Speedway on a nice day. It was a bit hot and humid this morning as the storm started to roll in. It's gotten a little bit windy and it is nice and cloudy so it's keeping the sun off of us. But uh, we are definitely a bit scared about tomorrow. If you pull up uh, weather.com or uh, your preferred weather app, you'll see that just off the east coast there's a massive typhoon that's headed this direction. It kind of swung left this afternoon. and. Uh, it seems to be heading right for us. It is kind of curving a little bit to the left, and we're supposed to see the first part of it hit ground uh, tonight and uh, into tomorrow morning. Hopefully we'll get really lucky like we did in Ebisu, and uh, the reports will show tons and tons of rain and wind, and it just won't happen. But uh, this one does look like it's a little bit, not guaranteed, but it looks a little bit scarier. And uh, we've heard from our competition director, Kevin Wells, that if by chance tomorrow does get canceled um, because the track won't let us run because of wind uh, and or rain, then uh, we would uh, uh, reward the results uh, with qualifying. So the judge is taking a look again at this initiation. Um, and uh, just to go back to that, uh, they would award points in the placing off of qualifying, but they wouldn't actually allocate championship points. It would just be qualifying points. Uh, they would begin to allocate championship points depending on how deep into competition we were able to get. Um, if they got through top 32, then they would uh, give quarter points, top 16 half points, and, uh, and grade eight through the finals would be full points. So it's a real possibility. We'll certainly keep you guys updated uh, on social media and through the website. But as of now, uh, it looks like, uh, what was the call on that, Ryan? Oh, we, we were um, talking about the Matsuyama um, potential late initiation, which it was, but we're just deeming it a late initiation, so that's fine. The style judge will take care of that. And uh, we were discussing the uh, M situation, the fact that it's not at the line for qualifying. So okay. just getting so, everything straightened out. So scored run there for Hokuto Matsuyama and uh, Mysterious M has disappeared into the ether as we try to determine uh, where he's at. Score should be in now. There we go. So it's a 68 for Matsuyama. Definitely want to try and better that. We saw a lot of the deductions uh, coming from the style judge, which uh, just as a reminder is scored in all the places that line and angle are not. So initiation, a big factor there, fluidity and commitment, uh, cover the style side of things, and then of course the transitions from the areas where line and angle are judged, also part of the style judges domain. All right, Masayoshi Tokita in the ZN6 Toyota 86, our next driver up. We're about a quarter of a way through the field so far as we try to get uh, qualifying done under nice conditions. It looks like uh, Tokita is backing off the line there. Not sure what's going on. I think he might need to rewarm his tires because he was sitting there for a few minutes. Ah. All right. So we'll get some heat back in the tires. Yep, that's what he's doing. Have you have you spoken to anybody, uh, teams drivers-wise, about how tire wear is at this track relative to, say, what we deal with back on the States? No, I have not. No, I do not. All I know is that it's very grippy because of the type of surface, the type of asphalt that they use here, uh, because it is such a high-level racing circuit. 
so they wanted to have um, a very high quality asphalt. For and that. when you guys are down there, you're placing uh, outside zones, and you guys are working on the track. Do you notice yeah. anything different than you know, say, Wall or Seattle? Well, the quality of the asphalt here is incredible. Yeah, right? it's very smooth. Uh, when it's starting to get wet, though, it's very slippery. Even with just all right, Tokita initiates right at the second standing cone, gets that left rear wheel a little bit late in that first outside zone, transitions back around. He's also late in outside zone two, and you can see that pushes him way wide to that first inside clip, and now he's got a little bit of a tight line to try to absorb into getting in that final third outside zone. So as Ryan mentioned uh, quite often in the opening, getting that right line from the get-go and committing to it, very important here. And Ryan, it looks like he just... Uh, got into that first outside zone a bit late and that kind of messed up the rest of the run. It certainly did. So as, like you were saying, really late there. Went wide, but very late. Very late there as well. And then it shot him way wide. Very, very poor on that inside clip. And then he got to outside zone three early as well. So kind of got out wide everywhere, but was just quite a few beats behind. You know, like a, a couple of seconds or fractions of a second. There's M driving through the course. All right, so M again mysteriously came out of the ether again. Looks like he's headed back. He's driving that uh, really famous RSR S15 piloted by many a driver in the past. Yes. So scores coming in for Masayoshi Tokita in the 86. Let's see where he lines up with the rest of the drivers. All right, so 61, so definitely some room for some improvement on his second run. Our next driver up was going to be uh, Yin Harino, who is a regular mainstay in the Formula Drift Japan Championship. He is out of competition, as we mentioned, and so it looks like, at least on my list, we'll be moving on to the next driver, Hubert Lee, who uh, is in Orito's uh, TRC Toyota 86. I watched him a few runs in practice. Oh, uh, is that updated? 71? 71. Okay. 61 a few minutes ago. <laughs> a few seconds ago. All right, so 71 there. Yeah, Rita will be borrowing this car to do the, I guess it's a GT86 challenge on Sunday. Um, it'll be Arido, Taniguchi, Osbo, and Hayashi maybe, all four of them. And he will be borrowing Hubert Lee's RSR car for that. Yeah, it is a motorsports weekend here, which is usually the uh, tradition. And coming up really short on that first inside clip, very early, excuse me, on that first outside zone. And it's not going to matter because an incomplete run has just happened in front of us, but it looks like it got started there right at initiation. He was very early on that first outside zone, and as he transitioned back around to the second outer zone, he found himself early again and then kind of got pinched off there before he hit that inside clip. Hubert's been having a couple of issues today in practice. Arito actually went out and drove his car in practice as well and said it was pretty difficult to drive, so maybe he has some setup concerns with it. Um, but as you can see, didn't make it out to one. Tried to throw it out to outside zone two in an effort to get it out wide there and uh, over-rotated the car coming to inside clip one. So ended up with an incomplete. So incomplete run for Hubert Lee, and that will push us right to our next driver who's already at the line there. That is Shinshichiro Saito, very famous S13 180SX, representing Car Guy Racing on good rides through the chicane. Going around that sweeper, gets that initiation nice and early. You can see smoke starting to billow up. Reaches out to that outside zone. Pretty decent job there. Now transitioning back around. Kind of slow transitions it, but he has to pull some angle out to get to that inside clip. Still taps the inside clip and then a better job towards that outside zone. So saw a little bit of adjustment of angle there from outside zone two to inside clip one. And we'll take another look at it as uh, we have now seen 
Shinichiro Saito finish up run number one. Ryan, what was the takeaway there? Really good run. Um, he got out wide to outside zone one, did a nice job. Did okay on outside zone two. Ended up uh, really wide on uh, outside zone three. So you can see there, got out to the rumble strip. Not much of a deduction there. A little bit more there because he left a little bit earlier. Had an issue with angle coming towards inside clip one. Just tapped that cone. <clears throat> so a bit of a deduction, nothing too major there. And then did really well on outside zone three. So overall, had a couple of errors, but managed to get out to some of the important spots on the track that we were telling the drivers to fulfill. So. Overall, not bad. He'll get a, a score in there. Look at that, an 80 for his first run. So, should give him a... I don't know where we're going to end up here. We have 40 drivers vying for 32 spots. So, we're going to see how the higher qualifying drivers end up filling the top part of the qualifying. And we'll have to see what uh, that minimum score is going to be. But 80 seems like a comfortable score. Well, some people... I, I hear some people say sometimes, oh, you know, the scores are always lower for the lower qualified drivers. But... That almost seems like a natural thing for me, uh, especially because the way that you guys look at these runs from the get-go is by absorbing what goes on in practice, obviously setting the criteria, but then as soon as you see that first run, you've established the scale and everything's more or less built off that. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. It's A lot of it, like you said, is built off of what we watch in practice, and we've been coming to this track for a few years now, plus we've watched practice today. So we more or less know what to expect and, and know what drivers are, are, are capable of. And we're going to judge on that type of scale. You know, we're going to look at what the top drivers are able to do, what the lower drivers are doing in terms of, uh, you know, scores, score-wise. And that's going to give us an idea of where these, uh, these scores are going to line up. I can't say that we sit here and, and mock judge qualifying, but in our heads we're all looking at what we like and what the maximum scores will be for each type of you know, fill of each zone. Basically. All right, so Sayori Iwasaki, our next driver up. Bit of a late initiation there, but just got it through that first standing cone. Very, very tight line here. Not able to fill that first and second outer zone. And because of that, he's going to go very wide and going to have to shut the car down and has to, oh, well, he does not even reinitiate. So that is going to be an incomplete for sure. So unfortunately for Sayori Iwasaki, with uh, Team KRC with LFW, he is going to have to try for run number two. Well, I'm going to give you a little correction here. It's oh. not a he, it's a she. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, so we didn't see her at Ebisu, and you can see the repairs that she made to the front. You can see both front fenders are different yellow than the rest of the car. Uh, she went into the, the dirt wall at Ebisu during the round two event that we had in practice and wasn't... The well, left-hand wall? Yes, exactly. Okay. So she wasn't competing in Ebisu. Um, there she is. There's her picture, Sayori. Well, that would make two females in the yes. competition this weekend. That is which correct. Is really cool. Her and Manoa. Yeah. All right, so Iwasaki Sayori will have that one to do again. But up next, Yuichi Amagai. Yes, 15, perfect style. He's a guy. I'm a guy. <laughs> Got a geek laddy at least there. Eh? Yeah, that was good. It's good, right? It's always nice to bring a little comedy. Right. Shut up. We gotta work we gotta work a lot harder. There's no Jared in the booth with us. <laughs> yeah. He just has everybody laughing, just being himself. Yes. There we go, we got the wave. The way he goes. Alright, through the chicane. Getting on the throttle here. Straight ahead, and he's already starting to break it loose. It's an early initiation there. Trying to reach out wide, comes up a little bit short. Line's looking pretty decent there, fills that second outer zone. Nice job on that inside clip and a pretty decent full pull here for Amagai. So 80 is our top score so far. Will that be topped? And uh, Ryan, walk us through this one here on the replay. You're right. Initiation was done fairly early. Looked pretty uh, pretty good on that. He was sideways well before the one cone. As he came out to outside zone one, got out to the white line, not quite on the rumble strip, so slight deduction there. Did a great job on outside zone two. Inside clip one was very slightly off. And then great job on outside zone three. I gave him full points on line there for the last uh, for the last zone. So overall, pretty smooth run. Didn't see any big corrections or mistakes made. Uh, throughout there, so it's about 85. There you go. So, our new number one qualifier, Yuichi Amagai, is able to come through. Ryan, do you know, um, does Robbie, the style judge, have 
I know he doesn't have a, a, a sliding scale on initiation, um, but basically the, your style. Andy, Andy Yen, uh, does he have a, um, there's no sliding scale on initiation. If you initiate at the third cone or the first standing cone, it's all the same. No difference, yeah. But there will be a deduction if you do it beyond. Right. All right, Yoshimi Mori, a bit short on that first outside zone. Nice flick back around, but just leaves that zone a little bit early. You can see some of the drivers having a tendency, once that line is drawn, they kind of have to deal with it, and he's not able to fill that third and final outside zone. Um, but if you're getting the audio coming through from the vehicles, you'll notice that most of the vehicles are having a little bit of a decel from outside zone two to inside clip one. But outside that, it's pretty much throttle all the way. And uh, Ryan, you know, what happened here with him with his line? Definitely missed outside zone one, and it just ruined the rest of his run, especially here at the finish line. You'll see he's way off outside zone three. Didn't even get close to that at all. And uh, being off on that first outside zone puts you really tight uh, on that track. So it's going to be um, shifting your whole run to the driver's right, basically. And it's going to be a challenge to transition the car and not go off on outside zone two if you've got the right momentum and uh, the flick going on there. So it makes it a challenge for sure to get through the rest of the course. All right, so Benjamin GM. Haven't seen him for a while. The wide body Supra. I believe uh, coming uh, from Singapore. I think he was at round one in a different car, wasn't he? May have been. His car was not ready yet, from what I recall. And I believe he was driving a different car. Maybe one of Andy Gray's cars. But he is, yeah, because he does. He is on power vehicles, right? Exactly, yeah. He's got that wild body kit on there. All right, so here we go. His first run, Benjamin Chiam. Qualifying run number one. He should have enough power. He has about 20, 26 of the so breaks it loose nice and early. Struggling with that first outside zone. A little bit better on that second outside zone. A lot of angle there through that first inside clip. To stay tight to it. A little bit short on that third and final outer zone. But overall a decent pull there for Benjamin Chiam as he wraps up his run one campaign. Andy Gray and the whole uh, Power Vehicles team cheering him on along with some of the other some of the other Power Vehicle cars, including uh, Sheng Yen and uh, Tashahari uh, Kazama, I believe. Edmund Cham, uh, yeah, Edmund as well is uh, with them. Edmund Chen. So a lot of Power Vehicle guys making that drive from Edisu. Uh, I'm not sure what happened there, but I'm like, let's we're getting the replay one more yeah, time. Here we go. So as he gets himself initiated, nice and early, you can see by the three cone actually. He's a little bit tight on line though. You'd like to be wider as you approach outside zone one, and you can see that he was uh, gave him an, an issue getting out to outside zone one. Outside zone two, not quite getting either, and outside zone three, he was off by quite a bit but able to spin the tires there without any problems. Just needs to get the car positioned in the right place on the track. And I believe initiation will be the important one. He's got to be a little bit wider or have a line that will lead him wider uh, once he initiates and not stay so far inside. So he ended up with a 77. All right, 77 for Benjamin Chiam and now Yoshichika Tamagawa. Saw him uh, have some incredible runs in Ebisu. Yeah, great looking car and he drives the wheels off. So Run number one, you can see nice early initiation. A lot of the veteran drivers really comfortable there. Starting to head out to that first outside zone, but comes up quite a bit short. Better job on that outside zone, but looks like he's going to pitch it a little bit wide and late on that first outside zone. Or excuse me, that first inside clip. But is able to maintain a pretty decent line, I would think you would say, Ryan, uh, to that final outside zone. Um, but struggling, it looks like a, you know quite a few drivers, the commitment level and getting out to that first outside zone, the timing seems to be really important. Uh, and it kind of sets up the rest of the run, though you can finesse it a little bit. Yeah, if it, you can see here that he was trying to play the safe run, being on the inside when he initiated. Because, like I said earlier, you come around that corner sort of blind. It's hard to see outside zone one until you're kind of really committed on going towards wherever you're going to be going towards. You have to be already initiated. And especially if you're initiating early like these guys are, it's you're, you're kind of rolling the dice. It's either you're going to be on the right line or you're not. 
and he was playing it safe by being a little bit inside and ended up with a 75 there on his first run. All right, so 75 puts him right smack in the middle of the scores we've seen so far. Our number one qualifier is Yuichi Amagai with an 85. It's pretty much guaranteed we'll see above that with uh, more than half the field left to go. And our next driver up is Atsushi Wachi at GP Sports S15 Sylvia. Bit of a wonky initiation there, and uh, you can see he pushes almost wide off course, and then right there drops at least two tires, throws some big smoke cloud up with some body parts, and struggles with that second outside zone. But I have to imagine, Ryan, that you're going to say that it really started from the initiation and uh, pushing a bit too hard in that first outside zone that got him caught up in the second outside zone. I'm going to take a look at his initiation here. It was, uh, like you said, kind of a two-tiered, a two-stepped initiation. So he got to angle and then kind of bobbled a bit. He went wide there, a little bit late, and then went way too wide there. Like you said, two tires off in the dirt, hit inside clip one, and uh, not the prettiest. Now, uh, we saw, going back to Seattle for fans who are watching in the States, because a lot of people, uh, English speaking, are watching this particular broadcast. You guys pretty much had three tires off, clear, three clear tires off as kind of the standard for an incomplete. Right. Is that something that will hold here as well, you think? I believe so. It's something that if you're that far off the track, it's going to be really hard to follow. It, beco it becomes a, an unchaseable lead run almost at that point, especially here with, with dirt that we have there, if you're going that far off, the decel in your car at that point is going to be so severe that it's going to be really difficult to follow the line, but also the momentum of the vehicle as well. This course in particular, uh, at certain areas of the, of the course, makes it much more noticeable, as does, you know, uh, courses that have uh, concrete walls, right? Because it's Seattle when you come off the bank, you're really only working with that yellow line, and over time, that yellow line uh, starts to fade away, and cars can go deep off of the course and if there was right. a wall there or if there was dirt there it'd be so so noticeable but unless you're really paying attention to that yellow line you're, you're not really going to be seeing it you're right yeah and it's uh that's what's so i guess you could call it nice maybe about this track is as soon as you go off it's very apparent it's it's not only are you going to see that big puff of dirt that we saw from his car you're also going to see the vehicle uh, kind of bounce go over that rougher section because it's been chewed up by cars all day today in practice so it's not going to be smooth it's not like going off on pavement like you said over the yellow line uh, it's going to be very noticeable and very apparent to everybody but it's also going to make the chase car have a very difficult time following you through there in a safe manner so it's it has to be we have to put a big uh, I guess punishment whatever the word you want to use is for that that move points wise because of that the chase car has to be not held responsible in that situation where the lead driver is making such a big error. And we did see some of that in Seattle. It'll be fun to talk about that if we get some downtime. But our next driver up is Edmund Chan in the TRCX Garage. DCX 100. Oh, and a big mistake there from outside zone one. Another driver drops two tires. He's got a lot of angle in the car. He's going to have to pull some out, and he's not able to. He over-rotates right between inside clip one and outside zone number three, and you can kind of see that starting to develop with that bobble from that first inside clip and just, again, ringing back to us very clearly how important it is to set that line from the onset. And, uh, Ryan, from your perspective, what happens here with uh, Edmund Chan? Yeah, you pretty much explained it the way it happened. It was um, very low angle, though, at outside zone one. It looked like he couldn't get the car to, uh, to full angle there. He couldn't get the car to much angle at all transitioned went a little bit off track and then that just sent him on a, a rotation in the car at that point that wasn't recoverable and ended up spinning out right there so it will be an incomplete for Edmund Chan unfortunately we've got uh, one two three drivers with incompletes that'll have to uh, do it over again to try and get a score on run number two and we've got one two drivers left before we take our first commercial break as that puts us at the halfway mark of our first run uh, it is Daichi Oshiro our next driver up and then Kazuya Iizuka and we'll take a quick five minute commercial break after that and come back and finish up the first run uh, with our current leader in the series Mad Mike Wadet being our final driver oh you're going to do it after this guy this one or this one after he, uh, okay. Just being told by our producer, it's act, the commercial break is actually going to be after this run. So, Daichi Oshiro 
will be our last driver before the first commercial break. Another JZX100. This one's a Mark II. He's been in the series for a few, a few years as well now. He's been around quite a bit. Different uh, livery on the car this year, but same car, same guy. Early initiation. Yeah, very early there. Already putting a lot of smoke on the tires. Great job there in that first outside zone. This might be one of the better runs. A little bit wide there, but you can see carrying a lot of speed. And he's able to get back and fill that outside zone. So starting off really strong. Ryan, you noticed the early initiation and uh, obviously the comfort level there looking pretty settled. He did have that tire off an outside zone too, but uh, is this one of the better runs from line perspective that you've seen so far? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's up there. He very, very confident, clearly, in his driving and in the track layout. Very uh, secure knowing where everything is by doing that early initiation. The fact that he initiated so early means that uh, he's kind of, he's going to be dedicated to whatever line he's kind of on coming through the initiation point to outside zone one. So he did a great job of setting the car at angle where he should and maintaining that angle throughout the entire corner, which is pretty impressive. And he, and he was rewarded with an 83 for his efforts. So you can see his angle suffered a little bit there with a 22 out of 30, but online he ended up with a 26. Next up is Izuka. So Izuka will be coming up next. Just waiting to get a, a view of the um, start line. There he is in his S15. All right, Kazuya Izuka. It looks like you had another correction as to when our break was going. Yeah, yeah, I was getting uh, mixed messages there. So I, I'm pretty sure I understand it's after this driver. All right. So we'll have a five-minute commercial break, which, like I said, puts us about halfway through the field so far. Let's see how Iizuka does here. Comes out of the gate pretty aggressive. Starting to roll. Has a little bit of trouble there, but is able to initiate at the third standing set of cones. Trying to get that rear wheel and bumper out to that. Oh, no, over-rotating. And he keeps some angle in it right on that line of an incomplete. Obviously a big mistake there. But he was fighting for it, wanted to avoid that incomplete. He looked like he had that over-rotation coming. But, uh, Ryan, I think you guys will probably judge that from yeah. my experience. So you're going to have some deductions online. He definitely had some deductions. But his score is still decent because zone 1 and zone 2, he actually did a good job on. So zone 1, not too bad there. Got out to the white line almost. 2, he was right on the edge of the pavement. Looked really good. Overshot outside zone, uh, or sorry, inside clip one though by a very large margin, and uh, missed outside zone three as well. But his major deductions are going to come from the style and angle portion for sure. Uh, the line aspect won't be deducted as severely as the other two, I would say. So each of these individual criteria are compartmentalized, and uh, so we don't see a lot of double negatives for drivers as uh, each part of the course is broken up. And Izuka, nonetheless, still has some work to do for run number two. So you can see the big deduction there, 22 out of 40 on style. That is to be expected after a run like that. All right, so now getting the signal, that will be our opportunity to break for a few minutes here. We'll come right back and finish up the first run of qualifying here at Fuji.
and we're back. <laughs> All right, we are back here halfway through the first run of qualifying at the G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan Round 3 here at Fuji Speedway. Conditions holding up. As we mentioned before, we are uh, under weather watch, but it doesn't seem like uh, it's going to have an effect until later on this evening, uh, so that may have an impact into tomorrow's competition potentially. We've been told that the typhoon is headed directly our way, but who knows? That's exactly what they said when we were in Ebisu last month. So let's see where we end up here today as we move on to our next driver, Yusuke Kusaba. Uh, Team Funky, and he's on Bridgestone Potenzas in the NZ6 Toyota 86. Team Funky. Up to the line. Car looks pretty funky, too. Looks bright colors. So our top score right now is an 85 with two drivers having that. Let's see how Kusaba does. Nice early initiation there. You can see starting to smoke coming out of his vehicle. A little bit of of a line issue on outside zone one he's going to miss inside clip one as well but able to get back around and does a better job on that final inside clip through the course blazing fast however and as we take a look at the replay we get some insight from you ryan on uh, what the takeaway there was overall and specifically to your line criteria so as he got to angle you can see the front wheels correcting a little bit there but not really in the outside zone yet you can see that he had low angle approaching outside zone one and then kind of threw it to angle at the zone so angle wise not ideal not really what we were looking for in that area but um it you can see it sort of sent him off on outside zone two a little bit was off on three or sorry inside clip one but did a good job on outside zone three so overall didn't work out too bad for him but definitely going to have a deduction on angle there in outside zone one all right so i'm waiting for the scores to drop here for kusaba Seeing some starting to come in right now. 76. That's 76 for Yusuke Kusaba. Scores were even there for line and angle at 22. But definitely had a deduction for that outside zone one area. Who's up next? UAO. Look at that. Katsuhiro. Uh, a fan favorite from many years ago and still finding his way into competition. He actually doesn't look like that in that photo. He's got Not long... Well. Long hair now. So, but uh, saw him compete many, many years ago. Also, as part of the uh, Red Bull Drifting World Championship. And a veteran driver gets a nice early initiation here. Pretty good job getting yeah. out of that first outside zone. And you can see the comfort level here. Woo. Big angle. Almost goes to understeer, but he misses that first inside clip. <laughs> but surprisingly, still able to get out to that final outside zone there. But Ryan, a very aggressive start oh for him. He was able to get pretty deep in that first outside zone, which is not something that we've seen. But obviously, uh, from your perspective, a little bit uh, of a mistake from outside zone into in, uh, outside zone two and inside to clip one, going a little bit long there. But he did himself a great favor on outside zone one. Look how wide he went, right on the rumble strip. Beautiful job. Outside uh, to outside zone two, a little late and hung it out wide a little too long, which, like you said, made a miss inside clip. And uh, not terrible in outside zone two. He got in it way too early, but filled it. Left it uh, a little bit early, but definitely got out into it, which was um, not expected after seeing what happened there at uh, inside clip two. But managed to adjust and get himself through there. If you go on the FD app, as uh, we see UAO comes in at 80, I actually have a clip of UAO. Uh, and Ryan Turk in a collision incident in Ooh. Las Vegas in like 2007, and uh, it, it's known as the infamous Turk Bunny Hop. So oh, I, I remember that. I won't, it, I won't ruin it for you, but it's in the app. It's probably about a month old, so go check it out. All right, Daisuke Hara, our next driver up. Team Good Ride, Team and uh, T Pro Passion in the S15. Michael Jackson style. Michael Jackson style. Hee <laughs> hee. Here he goes. He gets an early initiation, tries to get it to angle, and pushes out to that outside zone. But you can see coming up a little bit short and a little bit late. Better job on outside zone two there. A little bit of movement in those front wheels as he's not able to fully connect the line on that uh, inside clip. But as we see with a lot of drivers, a uh, bit more comfort there in that final outside zone. Uh, but once again, you know, a little bit of struggling from the initiation point and finding the right line momentum throttle control and everything else to hit that first outside zone, Ryan. 
as you said, early initiation before that three cone. So three, two, one. The one is where you need to be initiated by. Didn't quite reach out to outside zone one. Outside zone two got over the white line near that zone. So pretty solid score there. And then got out to outside zone three in a nice way. But it was just off of inside clip two. So overall, not a terrible run. Uh, a couple of things that he could clean up for run two. But he should get a, an okay score, 74. Uh, angle is definitely what suffered the most, I'd say, on that run. So a lot of drivers in that 72 to 79 range. We've got a couple 80s and uh, two 85s that uh, lead the leaderboard at current. And one uh, one driver in the 60s, two drivers in the 60s, three drivers in the four drivers in the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it up, right? All right. So Yasao Takano, our next driver up in the JZX 100. Gets that early initiation there, so seeing few drivers comfortable with that Ooh. but lacking the angle there and not the greatest job on that first outside zone or the second outside zone and the line being drawn here really hurting him and he has to pull some angle out of the car and also really decels in an area of the course where you should be on acceleration as we talked about uh, in the opening so this will certainly hurt him a number of different deductions there Ryan what was the biggest that stood out to you well angle wise he's going to suffer not the best run here like i said earlier it's very dependent on where you initiate if you're not on the right line approaching outside zone one it's going to throw the whole rest of the course off really hard to correct on this course um, once your path has been set without really um, changing the, the the momentum of the vehicle or or causing a a big slowdown so he just decided to go with it and try to correct as he was going, but it, it made him make some pretty big errors. So 66 is what he ends up with. 66, and you can see the breakdown there. Uh, 10 points off of line, 11 points off of angle, 13 yeah. points off of style. And uh, he will have to try again for run number two, Tashaharo Kazama, another driver with power vehicles. Beautiful S15. And uh, we saw him try to perform in Ebisu and uh, had some pretty good runs in practice but was able to fully put it together is able to get this nice early initiation that left rear wheel right on the edge unfortunately does not fill that first outer zone and he's going to go way off course here going to drop two tires you can see him also making some adjustment with the front wheels after that first inside clip so a run that was uh, kind of marked with some mistakes there, and it all started on that first outside zone, uh, kind of lacking the commitment, and then as he transitioned from outside zone one to outside zone two, did not get the line right, and it looks like he had dropped two tires, Ryan. Yes, so you can see he went wide early, which sent him inside later. Didn't, right, didn't quite get the right line there, and then because he was inside, Transitioning over to outside zone two, it sent him wide off of the edge of the track, missed inside clip two, or inside clip one, sorry, and then was not able to fulfill outside zone three to the fullest either. The section on the course that is um, marked by the two cones for yes. outside zone two, uh, you saw him kind of drop off there. He had a suspension compression. Mm -hmm. Is there actually a drop off there, or has that just been happening because drivers have been dropping wheels there? It was actually level grass last night when we were out there setting the track up and when we did our, our, our run through this morning on the track as well it's just the result of three practice sessions out there of drivers dropping tires and you know the first driver that went over there was probably fairly smooth and the more drivers went off as soon as you you know the, the suspension compresses and bounces and then it drops down again you end up having this ripple effect that that gets dug into the grass and it's just it's getting compounded the more drivers go off there so it's getting worse and worse um, so we're gonna have to do some resodding after this definitely some resodding uh, I don't know how well it's gonna hold up if it gets wet tomorrow that's a whole other question mm. um, but for now it's 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 turned into a bit of a, a bouncy off-road area all right so our next driver up should be uh, Masakazu Hashi and uh, I believe that is it. Yes, it is. Yep. Kazama ended up with a 71. Number 202 on the grid. Also driving S15. Let's see how he does here. Masakazu Hashi. Gets that early initiation. He's on throttle here. Smoke line starting to develop. 
not able to get out to that first outside zone. You can see just how many drivers are struggling with that. And he's going to fall prey also to that first inside flip with not getting out there. And he had to really push and manipulate the vehicle to fill that second outside, that uh, third outside zone rather. And I have to imagine, Ryan, from your perspective, when, when you can see a driver using certain techniques to fight the vehicle to get it where he wants to as opposed to a nice, smooth, smooth, settled run where the driver's going from lock to lock, filling the zones and just making it look easy when it's actually something that's really difficult to do. Yes, well, all this hinges on, like I said, that initiation spot, where you are on the track, which line you are lining yourself up to take at that point. So you can, you have the whole width of the track there. You can, you can get yourself set up you can come in at a uh, at a different angle, you know. Uh, you can start wide, come on in the inside, or you can start off in the middle of the track and try to hope the car goes wide. It just really depends how you're going to line yourself up there. And it's a lot of muscle memory, spatial awareness. You have to know where you are on the track, where you're going, looking at points on the track that are going to work as reminders for you. And sometimes they just don't line up, you know, with the pressures of qualifying. In practice, it looked like everybody was getting it pretty well, but... All right, so Masi Dao Minowa, second, uh, the first of two Minowas to be driving, our second female. And as she makes her way through the course, feeling that second outside zone pretty decently there. She's able to draw a pretty good line. Good for her. That's and uh, that is a pretty solid overall run there. A, a little bit of trouble there. You can see, you can tell physically she's not driving through as quick or as fast as other drivers, but because she understands that it's not about speed is not a criteria she's really focused on the, the line and angle side and i think from that perspective besides outside zone one it was overall a pretty uh, decent start for her yeah and she had some great runs in practice we were uh, watching through the sessions earlier and i was really impressed with how accurate she was being throughout practice now she's actually putting together a good qualifying run qualifying has been a bit of her achilles heel in the past throughout the season so um, it looks like she's getting more comfortable so she ended up with a 73. All right so nice uh, middle of the road score there 73 with our scores topping out at an 85 right now between two drivers and uh, it looks like up next we will have a James Tang driving the uh, TRC Toyota 86 beautiful looking vehicle we've seen James uh, in the series before he's driving the, the BMW last year yep. Let's see how he performs here RSR racing 86. Early initiation, a little bit of a flub there, trying to get the car to angle, and you can see he's unable to get out to that first outside zone. Danger zone here, but keeps it on the course. Pushes very wide. There. He's gonna have to get back on throttle. You can see the car jump in there. He's fighting it a little bit. So it will be a scored run for run number one, but certainly quite a few mistakes there that he can build off and try to repair for run number two. As he comes through the chicane there, he Burns out through the chicane. He'll try to he's moving the car around like he wants to initiate, but he's not able to get it uh, to break loose. He's still able to initiate, you know, in the zone that you guys want there. But where did he make some of his major mistakes, Ryan? Well, on line, definitely was not getting out to the zones that he should. Look at outside zone three here. Missed that by a long shot. Uh, Angle-wise, not doing phenomenal throughout the course either. Could have had more angle. Definitely could have done a better job than that. So he has some room for improvement. On his second run, uh, he will know now what he needs to fix. You can see there, line 17, angle 19. So some pretty big deductions there for line and angle. Fukada. So it looks like Vito is not going to be driving. Yeah, I just got the note on that too. Okay. All right, so Tadahiro Fukada. Very strong driver in the series. Early initiation, you can see pretty fluid motion as he pushes out to outside zone one. Could have done a little bit better there, but good transition back around. Fills that outside zone two. Big angle here. He starts to slow down, and he's going to miss this last outside zone. Seen a few drivers struggle with that in trying to maintain a fluid line from outside zone two through that inside clip without going too wide and then pushing out to that final outer zone. And uh, Fukata, definitely a fan favorite in the series. Seen him perform very well here. Uh, let's take a look at this run one more time. He gets that early initiation, Ryan, but it looks like after leaving outside zone two, uh, he struggles a little bit. Yes, he went uh, way wide here on inside clip one, and at that point drives to the inside 
missing outside zone three entirely and without much angle at all. He was lucky that he was able to maintain the angle that he maintained there, just enough to stay, I think, in our good graces in terms of giving him a score instead of giving him an incomplete, but it was very close. Uh, that would, I'd say, is pretty much the minimum that you would need to accomplish through that area. And could that shooting, overshooting out inside clip number one from the speed that was being generated could have been caused by a, a tighter line on inside clip one? Just not, you know, not getting out wide and putting big angle in the car, managing the speed properly. Could that have been why he overshot inside clip one, or is it just a timing thing? It might have been just a timing thing. He went long on outside zone two and uh, put a lot of angle in the car, which was not sustainable through there. Takashi Inome, our next driver up here. Uh oh, very late initiation. Does not get out to that first outside zone. Low angle here, starts to bring angle into the second outer zone but uh, a bit off that first inside clip. Better job there on that last outside zone, but uh, I have to imagine the style judge is gonna hit him pretty hard here. The uh, late initiation was pretty evident. Let's take a look. As you can see him coming down the hill here. And Ryan, you know, when you're the style judge, how would you judge this uh, initiation? Yeah, it was a very slow roll to angle. I'm, it'd be hard to say if that was right on the limit of what we would be accepting definitely late um, but I don't think it's enough to give him an incomplete it'll just be a, a low commitment score from Andy the style judge and the reason why you guys have implemented that uh, is actually really important from my perspective and especially at courses like Long Beach uh, where knowing where your dr the driver that you're competing against is going to initiate or having mm -hmm. a, at least a, a basic idea of where he's going to initiate is yes. so important for the head-to-head -head matchups to be close and how chase driver an opportunity to be able to, to compete with the lead driver exactly it's something that drifting is about angle and if you don't set a minimum for where that angle should be achieved then we know what drivers are like they're going to take that and stretch it out you know that inch is going to turn into a mile very quickly so we have to give them a place where they have to be uh, at angle. that's a very good issue well, the young kid, only 16 years old, maybe 17 now, but Kanta Yanaguida, a very strong talent, putting together a pretty solid run here for run number one. Just maybe it could have filled that second outside zone a little bit better, but you can see the confidence that exudes from uh, this young kid. Definitely one to watch, and uh, there have been some rumors of him trying to come over and compete in the States. He is an incredible young driver here, and you can see as he comes through the chicane, he's got intention on his mind as he initiates basically almost right out of the gate and, uh, and is able to really start off strong here, Ryan, for run number one. Yeah, he has the line figured out for sure from initiation to outside zone one. It's something that a lot of the drivers had been struggling with today. And he managed to do an initiation that was incredibly early and still filled outside zone one. So you have to have a lot of confidence in the line that you're, that you're taking through that area to get yourself lined up for a zone that is really far away as opposed to some guys that are initiating much later and still not able to achieve outside zone one. So he ends up with an 86. And that's going to pay off for him, especially as it stands right now, because he is currently our number one qualifier. And with seven drivers left to go, uh, Mad Mike Wadette included, as well as Andrew Gray and uh, Shinji Minoa, uh, and this gentleman here, Shang Nian, it's a, it's a strong score. But uh, Shang. An impressive driver. We've seen him over in the States in Pro 2. He's always got this uh, kind of flat gray uh, vehicle that he's driving. And uh, he gets started off strong with that early initiation, but does come up short on that first outside zone. Second outside zone better here. Kind of dives into this inside clip and stays on throttle and almost goes off course there. We've seen some really crazy antics from Shang. <laughs> Not only on course but off course he's always a color colorful one in the paddock and uh, ryan what's uh, the biggest takeaway from your perspective on this run here well he he was confident i think in, in his initiation he got the car to angle you can see a lot of throttle a lot of smoke but missed outside zone one he managed to get outside zone two okay came into inside clip one but went really wide here uh dropping potentially two tires but not taking those cones out that's the benefit of putting the cones just off the line that way the drivers aren't hitting them every time so he did a good job of getting through there all right so as we wait for shang score to come in we now have one two three four five six seven drivers left and we 
we'll finish with our first run of qualifying. It's a 77 for Shang, respectable score, but you know he wants to get that up a bit higher. We will move on to our next driver, who on my list is Wat Wataro Masuyama. And Ryan, we saw some really good runs from him in, in practice, uh, at least when I was down here, uh, and uh, expecting some pretty uh, big things from him this weekend, potentially. Yeah, he's always great to watch. At all the tracks that he drives at, he's very aggressive, fast, and committed to the course. So it's really Early initiation from this driver, and big angle out there to outside zone one. Nice job there, outside zone two, really complete. You can see the white rims really allow you to see the tire the tire and wheel movement that is being directed by the throttle control there and very little time being spent off throttle. You can see just a, a little bit of slowing down in the, uh, in the wheels movement, RPM wise from out, uh, outside zone two, but that's expected. And uh, Ryan, this is probably one of the better runs, if not the best run we've seen so far. Definitely the best from the line perspective. Look at outside zone one, right on the rumble strip, nice and wide, good committed angle, on throttle. Outside zone two left a little bit early. Uh, could have been a little bit closer to inside clip one, but outside zone three, right on the rumble strip. Great angle, the car looked really settled all the way through the course. So uh, I think it's gonna be a high score from all criteria for him. 92 and our first driver into the 90s a solid performance there a great run to build off of as he's got another one to go and you can see just a few points deducted from style so uh andy yen really giving him uh, a, a really fair score there 38 points overall like i was saying the car looked really settled once he got to angle he held it at angle didn't make a lot of corrections the rotation was quick at the, at the transition point so what drivers need to be doing today. Yoshitaka Ogane in the RX-7, one of the only few that we've seen, and he's really struggling with that initiation through that first outside zone. The line here, I think, overall, and since we get access to you, Ryan, was the most noticeable as far as I could see at first pass there, and just really didn't get a good jump overall. No, uh, that was one of the furthest cars off of outside zone one we've seen so far today. He didn't do bad on the rest of the course, oddly enough. It was just outside zone one that he missed by a large margin. I can't, I don't know how he managed to get the rest of the course so well. I guess he was, um, he wasn't great. He got to the white line on outside zone two. So could have done a lot worse based on how poor he was in outside zone one, but managed to salvage the rest of the run. So some minuses, as the other judges point out, gonna be coming uh, from this score. For Ogane. So RX7 fans looking for him to build off that. It'll be a 70 after run number one. And we are moving quickly along here. An hour and 11 minutes into qualifying. We're just about through the first run. And it does look like it is the ever, or rather infamous, Andrew Gray in a uh, a very strong vehicle. A new dad. A new dad and uh, looking to take some ground away from Matt Mike Ledette. You can see very early initiation there, quickly on throttle. Not feeling that first outer zone completely, but better on that outside zone too. Andrew Gray, known as one of the more aggressive drivers in the series, very difficult to beat in head-to-head -head matchups. Hasn't got the uh, greatest results, or at least the results up to his standard this year. But I'm looking to change that as uh, we are more than halfway through the season in Formula Drift Japan. You can see the comfort level there from Andrew Gray, early initiation. And uh, Ryan, from the line side overall, what was your takeaway here? Uh, this is another situation of coming in with a lot of confidence and just missing outside zone one. It, it's such a fine line between success and failure with outside zone one because it's so blind coming around that corner. You have to throw the car to angle, whatever part of the track you think is going to allow you to carry out to outside zone one without overshooting it. So it's a very fine line to walk for outside zone one. And the ones that have been successful have been very successful. We haven't had anybody go off too wide, but I think that's because it's the first run and everybody's playing it safe. So they'd rather be a little too far inside than going off wide. Because if you go off wide there, you end up on the grass and that's going to kill a lot of your momentum and it's gonna cause you to have a really hard time to get the rest of the course. Whereas if you're a little bit on the inside, you can salvage it as we've seen from a few drivers here. So an 83 for Andrew Gray, you know he's not gonna be satisfied with that. He'll come back and push for a better score in run number two. 
Ayato Miyoshi, another good ride driver, and team at T-Pro Passion. Or Michael Jackson style. The Michael Jackson style, and uh, the one and only uh, uh, ER34 yes. that we have here this weekend. Let's see how he does. He looked really good in that but a bit of a late initiation there and kind of gripping up. Wow, this is not really what we're, we're used to. Kind of struggling here. A driver that ranked as highly as he is right now. Not the greatest start there, and it all really started from the initiation. It was a, it was really threading the needle there, right on that last standing cone for the latest initiation point. Yeah, Let's it was take a, a look at this. It was an odd place to be initiating. If you watch, most drivers are mid-track as they come around here to initiate. He ended up way on the inside, if you can see there. His front right tire is right on that white line, so he completely missed outside zone one. Didn't do great on outside zone two. Off inside clip one, and the best part of the course was right there, and he was still a tire off on that. So really not precise, very imprecise throughout the entire course. All right, so shortly wrapping up our first round, first run of qualifying here. As we wait for Miyoshi's score to come in, it's a 63, so at the lower end of the field, it will definitely want to improve on that. Uh, as we mentioned, there are a few incompletes. Looks like four incompletes that uh, we'll have to deal with, but started off with 42 drivers, lost four due to mechanicals or other things, so no, those drivers were not able to make a uh, qualifying run. And uh, a few drivers that are going to really have to be fighting for those top 32 spots, especially those in the 60s, but this driver right here, is likely to lay down a strong score. Shinji Minowa, our second Minowa in that vehicle. Expectations are high for him. Yep, the JZX90 Mark II, and uh, really starting to push it here. Gets out to that outside zone, maybe could a little bit deeper, but you can see the aggression and overall control. Tiny bit long and wide on that first inside clip, but like Andrew Gray, not afraid to throw it down and uh, certainly keeps that throttle pretty much pinned. But Ryan, as you said, it this is not an easy course. The timing is so important, the initiation so important, and getting that first outside zone pretty much sets you up for the rest of the course. Even though he had this early initiation at a, at a unique part of the course, uh, he still kind of maybe could have been a little bit deeper there. Yes, could have been deeper in that zone. Didn't do a terrible job, though. Off on inside clip one a little bit. Right on that white line for outside zone three. So not a, not an overall terrible run. Could have cleaned it up a little bit, and I'm sure he's going to try to do that on run number two. We don't know how it's going to play out tomorrow with the weather. We don't know what's going to happen with competition either. We are uh, kind of at the mercy of the weather and the track here, so these drivers are trying to get a good qualifying position to get themselves positioned in a good spot for tomorrow because of uh, that potential incoming typhoon. Yes, and what Ryan is referring to there, if you are just now checking in with us, it is about 1.15 in the morning on the West Coast. I'll uh, give you some insight on that as we wait for Guichi Yamashita. That's early. Very early initiation. That's some great runs at Ebisu. Big angle there that he holds. Drops two tires, but still makes it look good. But he's going to miss that first inside clip. But you obviously see the potential there from Yamashita, Yamashita, and the uh, teamwork and team weld JZX 100 the Mark II. So Ryan, what was uh, the main point of uh, contention for you, or the positive takeaway from line here? Very early initiation. Line wise, as you see, outside zone one approaching. He gets out to the white line, so not perfect, but very good. Outside zone two goes a little bit wide there, drops a tire, which of course sends him wide on inside clip one as well. And it's not easy to get through this whole track um, if you make an error early. It's hard to fill the rest of it without making further errors. They kind of compound uh, after making that first one. All right, so scores are coming in right now for Ryuichi Yamashita. And we'll see where that slots him in. Obviously, We've only got one driver that has broken into the 90s, and it'll stay that way so far. Wataru Masuyama is currently your number one qualifier, but with one driver left to go, 
Let's introduce him. It is Mad Mike Wadet, your current points leader. Three events, three wins. Arguably the most popular drifter in the world. Spends his entire career around the world uh, doing competitions and also lots of demonstrations. He's got his own personal event coming up. Just left Goodwood not too long ago and made a big splash. Here he is, your current leader. A little bit of understeer there from Mike. Wow, that was pretty atypical. And he pays a price for it. Big snappy back. Transition background with huge angles. So this is uh, not going to be the run that Mad Mike is going to want to compete for that number one qualification. It was really weird from the initiation point. He had a bit of, it looks like a bit of understeer there that he was able to save, but it did cause some problems for him overall. Uh, and you can see the potential for Mike, especially the angle in outside zone two as he transitioned back around. But Ryan, what happened here? It looks like the track conditions have changed considerably since practice for a lot of these guys. I think that the grip level has been changed due to the fact that the sun went away and the guys are uh, not knowing what to expect. I guess when they go out there, they're, they're, they're expecting one level of grip and it's just not there. And we have seen that at this track before. I can remember for the world championship around a few years back, we had real issues uh, with grip changes uh, between heat and uh, some of this, the, the cloudy temperature and also morning and the afternoon. It's very, very noticeable, uh, unlike other tracks that have a bit more consistency. But let's see where this uh, slots in Mad Mike. It's going to be a 78. He's going to definitely want to have that be his throwaway. Definitely. So that is our first run of two of qualifying. We will take a quick break here, and we will start back over as right now, Wataru Masuyama is your number one qualifier with the number two. Right after this, back from Fuji.
and we are back here at the G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan Championship. We are just now beginning qualifying run number two, and after 40 cars had made their first qualifying lap, we see uh, Wataru Masuyama in the lead with a 92, the only 90 of the first qualifying run, including Andrew Gray and Mad Mike Wadet and Yamashita and Minowa and all those guys. So... Much deserved score too. He did a great job. Much deserved score, and Ryan, you you kind of speculated, but I'm I imagine that you're probably right, just because we've seen that before here that the surface conditions uh, probably change between qualifying. Now we saw cloud coverage really come over uh, when there was a lot of sun out during practice. Now the sun is starting to peak out again, but you have to wonder uh, how that will continue to affect or change the uh, way that drivers make their approaches. Yes. Yeah, you can see some of the drivers that we were used to seeing good runs from in practice end up in, in qualifying not able to get the car at angle where they were expecting to have an angle. So getting into an understeer situation pre, um, you know, they were initiating early, but the car should have been getting to angle predictably as they were doing in practice. Unfortunately, because the surface had changed, it seems like they were having an, uh, an issue getting to angle. Ooh, getting yelled at out on the track. So up on the line there, we have Yamanaka, Kenji. We have not seen him in competition this year yet. This is the first time in FD Japan, driving his trusty Tomei JZX 100. Yes, and many of the American fans will probably recognize Kenji. He's been in the series in the States mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. He's got a 79, so a respectable score. He's looking pretty solid, looking to build off of that 79. As he comes down in his JZX 100, early initiation there by that third standing set of cones. Oh, yeah. Big angle there. Good transition back around the line. Ryan seems like it's pretty much on point. Maybe could have been a little bit more fine-grained on that inside clip. But overall, looks like he learned a lot from that first run. Yes, I believe he did. That was a... Pretty solid line score from him. You could see his initiation was pretty snappy as well. He got to angle really quick. He had me concerned for a second there that he maybe thrown too much angle into the car, but it ended up working out really well. You can see that um, quick to angle, which you don't always see at this track. Sometimes they roll into it a little bit more, but got out really wide there at outside zone one. Good job on outside zone two. Like you said, went a little bit wide on, on inside clip, but right on the rumble strip through outside zone three. So respectable score there from line. At the very least, angle looked pretty strong throughout as well, and I didn't see any big corrections from the, you know, that the style judge would be concerned with. So, I think he'll have a pretty decent score. And it is an 86, a very solid score there, putting him definitely in the top two right now or top three right now. So, uh, looking very good. Yeah, you mentioned the rate to angle thing. I, for me, the rate to angle, not only on initiation but also on transitions uh, from you know, say t a touch and go to an outside zone is is the, a big differentiator for me between runs that have the, the exact same line. Right. You know, and we saw that that a little bit in Seattle, and I mm -hmm. think that's really impressive when people can do that quickly. Yes. Different approach here, nice and wide early. Tatsuya Iha in uh, the only crown, and a uh, good looking vehicle, but a little bit long here, and it's gonna it's gonna cost him. As he has to pull some angle out of the car, and that causes him to miss that last outside zone. So, Ryan, he was sitting on a 74, I believe, in run number one. Uh, talk us through this uh, run number two. Yeah, different approach on line as uh, he approached the initiation point. And it's fascinating to watch these drivers. They all have their own little style, the way they do things, where they initiate, because a lot of them are doing it much earlier than one would expect some of them to do it. And then some of them are able to get out there which you might not expect. Outside zone two there, he overshot quite a bit, and you can see that he missed inside clip one altogether and barely had angle over the finish line through outside zone three. So definitely going to be a deduction from uh, the line judge and the style, sorry, uh, angle judge as well. So you can see angle there, 19. So definitely a big uh, deduction from the, the line judge, or angle judge. So he's not able to build off of his first run score. He's going to have to sit with the number that he has 
there, which I believe, if I'm reading this correctly, is a 74. Mm-hmm. So we will move on to our number number 39, Yoshinori Shinozaki. In that uh, GCX 100, Mark II. He's got to get a score on the board here. He has an incomplete. Initiates. Does get it before that second standing set of cones. Looking better here. Doesn't fill that zone. Ooh. And he's going to go off course, but he's able to hold it together. Avoid the understeer here. Oh, but there it Ooh. is. And he kind of has to reinitiate, but he's not able actually get to get it to angle. And that reinitiation would have been a uh, really big mistake uh, if it was a very noticeable mistake. Uh, the drivers can, excuse me, the judges can award an incomplete, but I think because he lost drift towards the end of the course, it may be an incomplete, but what do you think, Ryan? Yeah, so from the initiation, looking at where he initiated, another different line, but he got out there wide wide enough, went too wide on outside zone three. You have to wonder if something broke at that point because he was unable to get the car back to angle after that point. The car, once he went by inside clip one, straightened up, and he was, uh, you could tell he was trying to apply throttle there, trying to get the car to angle again, but it just wouldn't do it. So I don't know if going off bent or broke something uh, in the suspension, but unfortunately it left him with a zero. So tough break there for Yoshinori Shinazaki. Our next driver up, Kazumi Takashi, TMS Racing, JZX100. There's a large antenna. And uh, let's see if he can improve on that 69. Does get that early initiation. Looks like he's got some good angle in the car. Comes up a little bit short. I like this transition back around. Very snappy, but he's going to be way wide on inside clip one. And there was that rate to angle that we talked about on outside zone number two. But uh, wasn't able to really put it all together with the uh, line from outside zone one uh, and uh, inside clip one. But, uh, Ryan, what do you what do you take away here? I'm wondering what he's trying to pick up on that big antenna. Early initiation, big car here. You can really see him getting to angle. As he gets outside zone one, kind of got to the white line, didn't fill it entirely. Outside zone two went really long on, which made him entirely miss inside clip one. And outside zone three wasn't as deep as he could have been and left it a little bit early, even though he wasn't all the way out. He actually went a little further in uh, before the end there. So um, could have been a cleaner run. So final run of the day in the books here for Kazumi Takashi. And he's trying to build off that 69. I have to imagine he's going to want to at least put himself in the mid-70s to try. And and he does that and a bit more, 79. So a 10-point improvement from run one to run number two. And we'll be moving quickly along here with Kazuki Hayashi. We will see him as well on Sunday, if all goes well, in the... I guess it's the GT86 challenge that they're going to do. Four cars. Should be fun to watch. All right, so here we go. Run number two. Pressure is on to build on that 77. Nice early initiation here. Looking a bit more confident. Gets out to that first outside zone. Great job there. Snappy back around, but he's going to have to make an adjustment here. And uh, he's very close to an incomplete, but obviously with so much angle in the vehicle from outside zone two, you really had no choice otherwise. It would have been a big stall up there. And, Ryan, when you find yourself in that position, what, what's what's the best thing to do as a driver? Well, what he just did, I think. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> It's better to do that than the spin. Trying to avoid that spin at all costs because a spin is an automatic incomplete. But uh, taking out a lot of angle, you can still manage to get through the course. Look at the line, though. Nice and wide there. Front tires never go straight. Just has to take out a lot of angle. That would be very difficult to follow, though. So uh, in terms of uh, lead run in a tandem situation, that would be not an uh, an unchaseable lead, but it would be definitely um, not held on the chase car if they made made a mistake trying to follow that. All right, so Kazuki Hayashi waits patiently, and he gets a one-point nod northern of his first score. From a 77 to a 78. Now, there he is. It's M. We mysteriously lost him in run number one. Didn't hear anything about it. Saw him drive mysteriously, appearing literally out of the ether, uh, going in the opposite direction of grid. And so here he is. His one and only chance at a score here. Starts off pretty decent. Looks like he's drawn a nice line here. 
It's not going to get fully out to that first outside zone. Really big e-brake pull there to outside zone number two, but this is going to get it done here. <laughs> he will drop a tire there just past the finish or just prior to the finish line. But uh, the pressure was on. It looks like he came through, Ryan. Yeah, he didn't do bad, uh, considering he only has the one run to get himself into the show. He took that one run opportunity and I think did possibly what he the best he could do, considering he only um, he kind of missed that first run, which gave, I think, a lot of the other drivers an idea of what the track conditions were like. So he had to come in here kind of uh, blind. He hasn't been on the track since practice. So not easy for him to do, but he did it. So a lot of pressure on the Thai driver in that RSR S15. Very famous vehicle around the world, especially here in Japan. And it's an 80, so a strong score for him. He's able to put it all together. And certainly I'm going to want to hear what transpired there in run number one. But we will quickly move on to our next driver. From what we heard, he thought that we were going to come get him. Oh. His lap. And uh, we expect drivers to be at the line when it's their turn. So he was uh, kind of chilling in his pit area, I believe, and just didn't know that he was supposed to be out there driving. Well, that's definitely a necessary condition to a score. Yes, absolutely. Hokuto Matsuyama, another JZX 100. 68 for him on run number one. Here we go. Rolls into it, has a little bit of a flub there on initiation, but is able to get angle in the car. Not getting out to that first outer zone. Snappy transition back around. Like the way he's performing here on the second half of the course. Great rate to angle from the transition from outside zone one to outside zone two. Just a little bit of a flub there when he started getting rolling, though, Ryan. Yeah. So initiation seems like it's giving a few people a hard time trying to get the car to angle but it's not easy when you're already rolling at high speed to try to roll on the throttle and get the car sideways so um sometimes in that situation uh, the break of traction for the rear from the rear wheels isn't sudden enough and it ends up just overpowering the front tires grip and just pushes the car and ends up in, a, in an understeer situation so um approaching that you know you, you need to do a bit of weight transfer there just to get the the weight towards the front so that the rears um, loosen up a little bit and the fronts grip up a little more. Well, a pretty significant jump from him, a 68 in run number one, all the way up to an 82. So drivers, even while not perfect, certainly making some good adjustments here. And let's see if our next driver can do that. He's got a fairly low score of a 71, number 828, Masayoshi Tokita. In one of four 86s here, beautiful looking car. We're in the good years. And he is through the chicane. Here it is, run number two. Puts the car sideways. Starting to build that smoke line up. Reaching out to that first outside zone. Just misses the white line by a little bit. Good transition back around. Better line here through that inside clip. You can hear and Ryan, clutch kicking away. <laughs> and it looks like we are starting to see drivers use the knowledge from run number one and for run number two we've seen consistently at least the last few run some higher scores here and and did uh tokita make necessary adjustments to get him above that 71. so looking at his initiation he got to angle very nicely something that some of the other drivers are having a little bit of a harder time with got out to outside zone one there a little angle correction before he transitioned so the style judge will be looking at that but from inside clip one, even outside zone two, through inside clip one to the finish, the angle was set. It looked good. Pretty confident looking through there. All right, and it is, yes, another big jump here. This is a nine-point jump. All the way up to 80. And we will move to Hubert Lee. Hubert Lee had some runs in qualify, excuse me, had some runs in practice that were completed but not able to do that on his qualifying run. So the RSR 86 trying to get into tomorrow's competition is coming down to this run here. The pressure is on for Hubert Lee. Gets that initiation at the third standing cone. Not out to that first outside zone, Ooh. and it's not going to happen. 
still having some trouble and unable to complete run number two. That's a brand new car for him this season. Run, uh, sorry, season, season, round one. He uh, Ruth Drew from competition. Uh, and uh, round two, I'm trying to remember what happened in, at Ebisu with Hubert. Maybe, um, anyway, he's been trying to learn that car this season, and you can tell that he's um, struggling a little bit with the setup to get the car driving the way that he wants it to. Uh, him and James built uh, those new cars both at the same time, they're teammates, and uh, it just looks like he's having a little bit of a harder time adjusting to the new chassis. He drove a JZX previously and didn't do too bad last year, was getting a lot more comfortable with competition, but this season just seems to have a, a couple of little hiccups there getting used to the new car. Next up we have Saito, not related to Daigo. Shinichiro Saito from Car Guy, RPS S13. Already logged a pretty good score of an 80. Looking to back that up now. Just missing that first white line. Early transition outside zone two comes off a bit short and also wide on that inside clip. But his campaign for the day is now over. He should be fine with that 80, but run number two, trying to vie for a few points higher than that. Ryan, what was the uh, big impression here from Shinichiro Saito? So outside zone one. Got out there. He could have been closer. White line he wasn't even achieving. Uh, we'd like to see the back tire on the rumble strip, so a little bit off of that. Kind of off everywhere except outside zone three. You can see all the way across outside zone three. Filled that zone nicely right on the rumble strip, so good job from him at the end of the run, but uh, could have cleaned up the beginning of it. All right, so the smoke looming here as the sun tries to peek its way through. It's cooled down quite a bit here, but the sun is... Uh, peeking through the clouds every now and again it's really nice outside it was uh, hot and humid earlier and certainly uh, some changing environmental conditions but we're really hoping that we don't get the rain that's forecasted for tomorrow it's going to be a drop of six points for him a 74 so he's going to stick with that 80 for run from num run number one and we will go to our next driver Sayori Iwasaki, she had that incomplete on run number one, and uh, this is her last and final chance to vie for a top 32 position. She probably needs a mid-70. Saw some go. good runs from her in practice, so hopefully she can pull one together in qualifying. And she is able to initiate early. She keeps angling the car. She's trying to draw that line out. She's going to be mid-line through that first inside clip. Excuse me, first outer zone, a little bit wide there. She can keep angle in the vehicle here and drive through that last outside zone. It looks like she's able to do it. So from what I can tell, that's going to be a scored run. Obviously, she struggled with the line in particular parts of the course. So, Ryan, what was uh, the takeaway from you, and where did the deductions come into play? She didn't look fully comfortable through the zones. Uh, you can see outside zone one off by quite a big margin there, adjusting the angle as well. She was really early in outside zone uh, two, and uh, but left it very early. So she, she only got somewhat close at the very beginning, but left it quite, uh, quite a bit earlier than she should. Inside clip one, off a little bit as well. So... Definitely some room for improvement throughout that run. She ends up with a 63. 63, so it may not cut it, but I am just doing this off the top of my head here from what, from what I can see. And uh, for all the fans tomorrow, I'll just put this out there a few times just in case you're off to bed. Looks like we're going to start the broadcast about an hour early tomorrow to try to avoid the uh, weather that seems to be looming. So we will uh, post it on social media and wherever we can, but just uh, put that in your head now. All right, I'm a guy. He started us off with a high score of an 85, and look at this. Really getting out there to that first outside zone, second outside zone, completed pretty well. Tight on that inside clip and noticing very little movement from the front wheels. He kind of stayed locked, made little minute adjustments. He looked pretty settled there, and Ryan, this is two scores back-to-back -back for him that uh, look pretty solid what are you noticing from his driving style here yeah very minimal deductions for line for for him 
He got uh, to angle pretty nicely. You can see the front of the car there, uh, pretty high setup in the front, but it gives the car room to achieve that angle that it needs. Good job outside zone one, outside zone two. Not bad on inside clip one. And look at the third one, right on the rumble strip all the way through it. So a perfect line through outside zone three. And he's going to end up with a pretty decent score. Yeah, he's right up there. He's tied for eight. Oh, wow, look at this, a 93. And he jumps to the number one qualification spot yeah. by one point over Matsuyama. Looks good with his sunglasses, too. Badass. So Amagai continues to impress, and he has laid down the standard for the afternoon. It is Amagai and then Matsuyama at a 92, the only two 90s in the field so far. As we move quickly on to our next driver, Yoshimi Mori. Now Mori does have some work to do here. He had that 71. He had a few flubs in that first run along with some line issues that caused him to get some deductions. This looks like a little bit better run, really pouring on the throttle here. And you can see a little bit too hot. And he will get a deduction for that first inside clip. But I'd have to say that's an overall improvement in the driving generally from that 71. He looked a bit more settled and uh, was, was able to uh, get out to that first outside zone a bit better than in run number one. But he does have a 71, so he can pretty much only go north from here. What were, what were the things that you took away, Ryan? Yeah, got a uh, little slow to angle, but he was at angle at uh, the one cone significantly. Um, good job on outside zone one, a little late getting into outside zone two, which then uh, made him overshoot inside clip one. And he left outside zone three a little bit early, so not as accurate as he could have been, uh, but overall pretty good job throughout the, the run there. All right, Yoshimi Mori from Team Mori in the S15 awaits his score and he will get a bit of a bump a 79 and that has got to give him some confidence there yeah i would say he got a bump in all the criteria um, which helped him get up there so he cleaned it up but definitely room for um, a little bit more improvement our next driver from team power vehicles benjamin chiam heads out of the gate he's got a 77 rolls into it Gets that early initiation. Big smoke line developing. Nice job there getting that left rear wheel right on that white line. Deeper there into that second outer zone. Wow. And from the first inside clip, he was a little bit wide, but he made it look very solid. And I guess you could use the word risky going to that third outside zone where he really threaded the needle there, but made it look pretty good. And uh, Ryan... He's trying to build on a 77. I think he might get it. Yes, I think he might. Good committed run here. Nice and wide on outside zone one. Look at the throttle commitment on uh, through outside zone one, outside zone two. Quickie brake pull between outside zone two and inside clip one. But right back on throttle through to the finish line. Couldn't even see him there as he was going through outside zone three. So definitely one of the higher committed runs. And uh, pretty solid on line. 92. Look at that. Wow. So the judges rewarding... Ryan, you just gave him a three-point deduction. Mm -hmm. uh, Look at the jump from his first a run. A three-point deduction from, it looks like, uh, what's his name? Robbie Nishida. Robbie Nishida, <laughs> that guy down <laughs> there. Yeah, that guy down there. And then two points from uh, Andy Yen. So, yeah. yes, as you mentioned, a massive jump from a 77 to a 92, yeah. probably the biggest that we've seen so far. And now the driver's really starting to kick into a higher gear here as now we see Tamagawa, very early initiation. He heads wide. Is he going to get out there? there? He go. is. Beautiful job there. Fluid transition back around. Shorter on that second outside zone, but still making it look good. And no doubt in my mind, that's better than a 75. So, and Ryan, unlike what we've seen from most of the other drivers this time, outside zone one was performed pretty well. Yes, it was. Now, we're starting to see drivers perform at the level that we were seeing in practice. I believe that they were probably being a little bit conservative on their first run, but now they're, they're, they're throwing caution to the wind, and they're uh, definitely pushing a lot harder than we've seen them push in their first run. Nice and wide on outside zone one with big angle, very committed on throttle, did a great job through outside zone three as well. Just a little bit off of inside clip one, but overall a very committed uh, very committed run. So now another 90 score, so 91 for him. 90s are starting to become the norm here. We've had two 90s in the past three runs. And uh, it's a competition that is going to continue to build as we go to 2-2-2 at Sushi Wachi. 
with GP Sports in the S15. Now he definitely has a lot of work to do. He's got a 63 on his first run. Let's see how he does here. Middle of the road. Needs to head out wide. Just misses that white line. Uh Uh-oh, drops a tire there. Makes a bit of an adjustment. Now he's tight on that inside clip. He needs to get back on the throttle. He's going to lose angle in the vehicle, and this is right there on the line, kind of driving straight through that last section of the course. And, uh, Ryan, what's the consensus from the judges here? Yeah, I believe it's going to be a zero just because of the straightening between inside clip one and outside zone three before the finish line. Did not complete the course at angle, which is an important part of drifting is to have angle. And, uh, you know, we repeat ourselves quite a bit to the drivers uh, you have to finish the course. You have to have angle through the, the finish line, and he just kind of drove straight from, uh, you know, just a little bit before outside zone three through it and over the finish line. So, unfortunately, it's going to be a, an incomplete, which equates to a zero here in qualifying. All right, so we've got another incomplete driver. <laughs> Not incomplete driver. We have a driver <laughs> that has an incomplete. You're an incomplete driver. You're an incomplete person. You can't go sideways. We need you to <laughs> become a more whole person. Edmund Chan. TRC XD Garage. He does have an incomplete. He gets, oh, he has a little bit of a adjustment from the front end there. And he's going to spin out here maybe, but he's going <laughs> to yeah. he's gonna try for it, but it's not going to happen. You, you have to congratulate the effort there. That was uh, <laughs> definitely a worthwhile endeavor knowing where it was going. But once he got basically to 90-degree angle there without – being on the proper line that was gonna inevitably gonna happen it was gonna happen yeah it's um not easy to recover from something like that maintaining angle throughout the rest you can see pretty much over rotated there but thanks to the uh, big angle kit that he has on the car stay he kept the tire spinning but unfortunately he pretty much did an opposite drift there um between inside clip one and outside zone three so yeah that'll be an incomplete from him so another driver gets knocked out. That's one, two, three, four drivers completely knocked out of competition now. Uh, so that is narrowing the field here. We started off with 42. We, excuse me, we started the weekend with 42. We started qualifying with 39. And now we're down to 38, 37, 36, 35 drivers. So now there's three open spots. And we do have uh, no more incompletes through the rest of the run here. R- runs here. But uh, Daichi Oshiro, solid position for him. He's an 85. He's going to want to try to build off of that, but he is solidly into tomorrow's competition. Initiates nice and early, headed now towards that outside zone. He's not going to get fully out there, but as he transitions back around, he's got big angle there, has to pull some out. And uh, maybe not an improvement on run number one as he takes out pretty violently the first cone of the start of the last outside zone so ryan he he obviously had a good score there and uh maybe was pushing a little bit too hard yes i believe he did initiation very very early looked pretty good um as he gets out wide here not quite as wide as he could be at outside zone one and then outside zone two did a really great job there tire on the edge of the pavement essentially over the white line inside clip one a little bit wide and then goes very wide on outside zone three hits that um, outside zone marker, which we see the little van coming to uh, to repair for us. But uh, like I was saying earlier, that's the issue with this track. It's so big that it takes a while for anything to get cleaned up. All right, so 76 for Daichi Oshiro. And 85 on his first run, so he's going to hang on to that one. And um, after the cleanup here on aisle 11, we will move on to our next driver, Kazuya Izuka, who is sitting on a 62 and ryan that definitely does not seem like a score that he would finish up with i believe he had an 83 in his first oh maybe i wrote that down wrong yeah am i wrong or are you wrong i checked over here and they've got 83 as well so two against one (laughs) okay 83 i believe it was an 83 83 as well yeah 83 all the way across all right yeah you're wrong on me so we're getting this uh cone cleaned up picked up put back in the right spot and our uh Little guys will get back in their van with their little helmets on, drive off the course. But again, such a big track here with these big runoff areas. Very safe, but it just makes for a long cleanup process for us sometimes. But it's worth it to be here at this track. And luckily, this is a very 
top-notch, high-quality track. You yes, world-class for world sure. World-class for sure, and uh, they've been great to us over the years and uh, really do a great job in the course maintenance, especially with the amount of uh, tire particulate. A look at the particulate. You can see it from here. All right, here we go. Iizuka, 62. Ooh, big initiation. Bit of trouble there, but then gets right into initiation. Just fine finding that white line by smallest of margins. Now, this is going to definitely better the 62. It's more of a question of where it's going to go. He did not have a strong performance on run number one. He came back with not a perfect performance, but much better, noticeably better than run number one, Ryan. Yes. So he, he uh, did a little uh, shimmy here, flicked the car to angle, did a pretty good job of getting it to angle pretty quickly. Looked good throughout side zone one. Nice transition. Could have been a little snappier on his transition there, but he's putting the car in the right places. It looks aggressive. He's on throttle throughout the entire course, so it, um, it'll bode well for him on the style side of things. So he ends up with an 82, 20-point jump from his first qualifying lap. So that is the new biggest point jump from run one to run number two and that that is kind of expected from him he he tends to perform pretty well in qualifying number 938 up next yusuke kusaba the funky man <laughs> on potenza's beautiful vehicle new car for him this year yeah new car 76 on run number one let's see if he can build on that here he comes big understeer here he's not Ooh. initiating not Ooh. still not and he's going to go off course Woo! Yeah, that's an incomplete so maybe underestimating the grip levels there you can see now he's moving the car around so he's going to have to hope that 76 is enough to do it i think it probably will be but uh it's hard to say for sure ryan why did that happen well it could be track surface um it looks like he just got that understeer starting and did not correct it he just kept the car at in an understeer situation, uh, definitely could have done something there to fix that. Uh, he might have had a later initiation, but at least he would have had an initiation instead of just kind of holding on to the hang in the front end out, as we call it. Um, yeah, that, that could have been, it feels like that could have been repaired, but I'm not in the car, so I can't say, I guess. It's easy to sit here and say what he could have and should have done, uh, but I guess he felt uh, that there was nothing to do at that point. He just held on, tried to keep it on the track, went off a bit. But uh, definitely could have been a lot worse had there been something to actually hit on the outside there. So it's the one thing you didn't have to deal with. All right. So Ueo, Katsuhiro Ueo, our next driver up. And always, always carrying the number 15. And uh, he's representing ZSS Racing. The picture that we have up here it looks much different than much different. What you see there. <laughs> I have to wonder when that was taken. Yeah, he's got a very big mop of hair. We have the safety vehicle out on track, just uh, checking the surface perhaps, looking for possible um, cone that got bumped out of place. They're going to put that back into its little home. There we go. Very professional here at Fuji Speedway, but look at all that tire particulate. Oof, it's everywhere. Big chunks of it. So now as they drive through it, they're definitely going to have a rougher ride with the tires coated in uh, soft rubber bumps all over their uh, tread now. That's a pain. Happens to us sometimes too, you know. Get the tires all covered in rubber and then go out on the road. Tires are all, the wheels are all unbalanced at that point and uh, vibrate all over the place until you can get rid of it. Yeah, and there are some sticky compounds out oh, here. Oh, so sticky, yes. All right, now back to the action. Katsuhiro Ueo with an 80 on run number one. Here he starts his campaign for run number two. Very early initiation. Pouring the throttle on, getting out there to that first outside zone right on the white line. Late. Deep into that second outer zone, but very late. And he's going to miss that by a wide margin. Very quick car, lots of grip there. And uh, we'll suffer a few line points, I imagine, Ryan, on outside zone two. Yes, he definitely will. But he did a good job on outside zone one. He got out wide. Let's watch the replay from a different perspective to see how deep and how long he filled it, actually. It's uh, one thing to get out deep, but it's not a touch and go. You actually have to fill the whole thing. So looking there, got to the white line a little bit late. So uh, you can compare that to outside zone two, which he also uh, did quite a bit late, which caused him to miss inside clip. So that's um, going to be a big 
deduction, especially in inside clip one for him. Scores coming in for Katsuhiro Ueo as we make our way down to the qualifying list. More than halfway through our second run now. And it's an 80, so he goes. Same score. Standard from run one to run number two. And sitting strong up on top of the scoreboard is Yuichi Yamagai. Amagai with a 93. We've got a 91 from Tamagawa, a 92 from Benjamin Chiam, and a 92 from Masuyama. Our next driver up is Hara, Daisuke Hara. 74 on run number one. Bit of an understeer there, but was able to not get it all the way around. And he will get a score here on run number two. And uh, Ryan, what happened there? So I'm going to get my score put in. Boom, it's done. Watching him get to angle, uh, he managed to uh, do a nice initiation. Didn't have any problems there. It was early enough, so that's not a problem. Out to outside zone one, could have been wider. Transition here was controlled. You can see that he was not letting the car rotate. So on, in terms of style, Andy will be uh, deducting some points there. We like to see a nice rotation from big angle to big angle. And what we told him in the meeting is through outside zone two, when they throw that angle, they should be using that to slow down. So didn't quite do that. Well, he will get a tiny bump, a 74 to a 76. So he's going to have to hope that that holds with the uh, remainder of the field. Yasao Takano, one of our, the few drivers that are running Federals out here. He's got the JZX 100. Good-looking livery. And he's got the uh, bright wheel color so you can see all the e-brake e yanking. But not a lot of that going on here on that on this course. Gets that initiation of that second standing cone. On throttle now, he's gonna just touch that white line. Not a lot of angle there, and he slow rolls the transition. And he goes a little bit wide on that first inside clip. Better job on that outside zone, but you can see, unlike a lot of other drivers, he was starting to get off throttle there. And uh, the smoke line definitely less noticeable. So Ryan, walk us through Takano's final run in the afternoon. Getting to angle. Nice little flick there. Um, it's a little bit tricky here, of course, with the corner that you're already in when you initiate, but did a good job. Got out to outside zone one a little bit late, and the same with outside zone two. Got out wide, but didn't do it as early as he should. A little bit wide on outs inside clip one, and then outside zone three, not too bad. Didn't finish with a whole lot of angle, though. Could have been a little bit more committed through the finish line on angle, and you can see there you got a 23 out of 30 uh, from the angle judge. Well, he will get a pretty sizable bump. He started off. His first run with the 66, he ends with the 79, and that's probably going to be enough to get it done. So let's move on to our next driver here, Toshiharu Kazama, and we saw Kazama also struggle a bit here, especially with outside zone two to inside clip one. Let's see if he can fix that here with run number two. Very early initiation, staying on throttle here, and he also is just barely going to touch that white line. Woo. But this time he goes off course Oof. in the second outer zone and also off course completely. Does not try to save it. <laughs> Just wow. stay in it while you're at it too. Full throttle, no lift. Good for him. Well, Ryan, obviously that's going to be an incomplete going yes. four wheels off there. What, what, if you had to guess, why didn't he try to save it after outside zone two? Well, at that point, there's not a whole lot you can do. The momentum of the vehicle, if you watch here, outside zone one, did a good job there, got to the white line. Outside zone two, put tires off, which is going to reduce your grip level and send you wide. He's already, um, the line, the momentum yeah. is carrying him wide there. Not a whole lot you can do at that point, but just stay on the throttle and kind of ride it out, basically. All right, so he's uh, very close to that bubble there, 71. Um, and he's going to have to stick with that. All right, so just getting past a note here. Tomorrow, we're going to start the show a bit earlier. 8.30 Japan time in the morning is top 32. And I'll give you the rest as we finish this uh, run here. Up next, Masaki Kazu, Masakazu Hashi. Nice job on that first outside zone. A little bit short there on the second. Deeper, but goes a little bit long on that first inside clip in there. A little bit stronger there in that uh, third outside zone. 
And Ryan, what's the takeaway here? He had a 68 on run number one. So as we see him coming up to the initiation point, we'll watch his initiation. Rotated pretty pretty nicely there to angle. Seems like he's pretty settled, but not a lot of angle as he's approaching outside zone one. Does a quick little rotation to get the car to angle, but as you can see, that um, late throwing to angle and outside zone one caused him to go late on outside zone two. Um, and uh, got out wide there, but quite a bit later than he probably should have. All right, so going back to the note that I was passed here, uh, just a change in the schedule for tomorrow. We'll get this posted up everywhere tonight. 8.30 a.m. is our top 32, as we see Masakazu Hashi drop a 75. And then we will kick off the top 16 at noon, Japan Standard Time. So for everybody back on the West Coast, that'll be uh, late afternoon for you. And again, this is all to avoid that terrible-looking tsunami. Not tsunami. I used the wrong word. Typhoon. Apologize. Typhoon. It's a T word. Masayo Minowa, 73. First run was pretty decent. This time better on that first outside yeah. zone. Got deeper there. Fluid. Transition back around to outside zone. Number two misses that first inside clip. And it uh, looks like she's improving every single run. For sure. She's got that 73. What are your feelings here, Ryan? I'm, I'm really impressed with the progress that she's making this season. She's looking a lot more confident, and especially on a track like this that requires so much throttle, so much speed and maintenance of, of uh, momentum throughout the course. She uh, got wide at outside zone one, outside zone two, just went a little bit wider than she should have there on inside clip one, but got out to the rumble strip on outside zone three. So overall, uh, a pretty clean run. Um, not a lot of corrections from the car either, so pretty settled. Well, fighting for a, a top 32 position, and if she can get above a 75, it certainly makes her campaign much more plausible. 78. So it's a good improvement, and I think that's probably going to do it. 62 from our next driver, James Tang, is definitely something that needs to be improved here. So James in the RSR, Toyota Racing, 86. Early initiation. Ooh, oh, big no. understeer here. He's going off course. And that is why we're all happy there's no walls over there because that would have been really gnarly and so ryan understeering seems to be hurting some of the drivers on initiation what happened to james yeah it's um i'm not sure what's going on with the track surface because he started to get to angle and then the car just transitioned to understeer at that point i don't know if they're too gripped up in the rear and uh maybe not having the proper setup uh, to be ready for the amount of uh, amount of grip that's out there it's hard to really say without being out on the track unfortunate what happened uh, to him there though that's maybe more of a problem than just grip since his car's still sitting on the track and he's not going anywhere so it could have been a situation where the power uh, was no longer being put to the ground and then he wasn't able to um, keep the the rear of the car in a, in a drift situation like an oversteer situation and then uh, you know the rear gripped up because there wasn't enough power and then he ended up in an understeer, understeer situation these cars are set uh oh no power steering okay so yeah that it looks power like that was a direct issue. note from uh somebody in the know yeah somebody over there so we're going to hook him up to this cute little van here and get him pulled off the track yeah So unfortunate for James Tang, it sounds like it is mechanical that contributed to his incomplete, and that is unfortunate because he has a 62, and right now we've got about 10 drivers left, and all of those drivers, um, except for two, are out of the 60s. And the two that are not, Fukada and Inome, uh, have a 66 and a 65. So for James, he is right now near the bottom. Uh, and depending on how many overall drivers are knocked out, it's going to be very tight. I don't think it's going to do it.
This is a new car from James this year. Like you said, he was driving that BMW 1 Series last year, which I was told was a very capable car. A few other people uh, had driven it up at Ebisu, and uh, they said it was very fast and very capable. All right, well, we're getting the signal here to take a quick commercial break due to James needing to be escorted off the course. We'll be back to Fuji in just a few minutes here to finish up qualifying here at round three. All right, we are back here with the final moments of qualifying on our second run. And Ryan Sage along with Ryan Lantain bringing you all the sights and sounds here at round three at Fuji Speedway. And the smells. And the smells, yes. And the weather, though you can't feel it, you can kind of see it. It's a little bit gray outside right now. Uh, it's cooling down. Yeah, the weather's changed a lot today. And we... During the break, I counted, we have 35 scores, so there's going to be two unlucky drivers that are going to get knocked out here. Let's take a look at Fukata. This is another driver with a lower score, starting off much better this time around. He had a 66, and looks like he's putting it together much better on run number two. So he's going to bump himself out of the 60s pretty easily, and we'll see exactly where that uh, slots in on a second run, Ryan. So Fukata with another big antenna on his car. Uh, outside zone one, did a pretty good job. Got right onto the rumble strip there. Outside zone two, filled it pretty well. Got in a little bit late, but seemed to get out pretty deep. A little bit off inside clip one, but outside zone three, really, uh, really well done through that section of the course. So I believe he will get a better score here than he had on his first run, which uh, was a 66. So I don't think that's going to be too hard to beat. Yeah, he's got an 85 now, so good for him. Uh, secure himself a position there with an 85. Yep, he knocks that 66 yep. all the way down. And uh, Takashi Inome is our next driver up. Another driver trying to get out of the 60s. Uh, he does have uh, the higher of the 
the 60s between the guy and the gentleman that have those. So it seems like he'll be in qualifying position nonetheless. But this time he's looking to improve on that first run. Big angle on that first outside zone, but completely misses that second outer zone. So still leaving some points on the board, but might be bettering it nonetheless because he did have that 65. So let's take a look at this Ryan here on the replay. Outside zone one, got out wide. I'll have to watch from a different angle here to see how well he filled it though. Did he, was he wide from the beginning to the end? Yeah, he got just just inside of the, the white line. Like you said, big angle, but maybe that hurt him on his transition going out to outside zone two. It's kind of um, an area where you have to walk the fine line between too much angle and not enough angle. But if you throw too much sometimes, it'll slow you down and it'll kill your momentum and you won't be able to get out wide. So we came into this with a 65. Definitely a better score on line. 77, so it is a 12 point bump. And at this point in run number one, this gentleman had the number one qualifying spot. That is Kanta Yanaguida. Team Top Tool Racing with Rio Japan. And uh, he came out with a lot of confidence and really delivered there on that first run. So he's going to try to push it here for run number two. Very early initiation. Finds that line. He's pushing out towards that first outside zone. Really well done. Maybe left it a little bit late. Big angle there on that second outside zone. And once again, looking very impressive with very few mistakes, very few noticeable mistakes on that second run. Maybe a tiny bit wide on that on the first inside clip, but Ryan, did he improve overall from your perspective on run number one? Yes, I believe that he did. That was a pretty high level run that he did there. Really confident in his uh, in his line with that early initiation. Very wide on outside zone one, but hung out there a little bit late. Filled outside zone two a little bit late, which caused him to go wide on inside clip one. Did a great job in outside zone three though. All right, so Cantayana Guida. Representing Team Top Tool continues to impress. Only 16 or 17 years old, depending on when his birthday is, which I don't know off the top of my head, but very young. And a 93, so he is going to tie for first place. And actually, that is going to bump him into, into first place because the other driver that had a 93, Yuichi Yamagai, his first score was an 85, just one point down from the 86 of Cantayana Guida. So we're seeing the consistency pay off here as the young drifter now finds himself in the lead of the pack, a pack full of veterans. And we move quickly along to our next driver, Shang Yin, who initiates nice and early. And he is going to miss that first outside zone. Better on that second outer zone. A little bit of movement at the front wheels, but is able to pick up some ground here and uh, he does take out the finish line cones and also the cone that makes up the last half of the outside zone so Shang did struggle there Ryan with that first outer zone and uh, he had a 77 on run number one so we'll have to see during the replay how well he did so missed that outside zone one by quite a bit outside zone two did a good job filled it for the most part from beginning to end maybe a little bit late coming in outside zone three went a little bit wide hit that clip marker there at the end of the zone so uh, a couple of little deductions on line very similar score from line that i gave him on his first run actually so but he does improve overall he does improve to an 82 and that takes us to a very interesting case once we clear the course here which is wataru masuyama now masuyama is not our number one qualifier anymore because we just saw Yanaguida do that, but he has the only remaining potential besides Minowa to be the number one qualifier because he has a higher first run score than Yanaguida. He has a 92 and he was our number one qualifier uh, for uh, quite a while into run number two. So, we have Masuyama, who has a 92 in run number one, and we also have Shinji Minowa, who has an 88 in run number one. Those are the only two drivers at this point that can 
that uh, can knock Yana Guida off of his uh, first place position so far. Some good analysis, Ryan. Manalyzing, dog. I think that um, that level of analysis is definitely appreciated because uh, you need to look ahead there. You need to be very aware of all the, the different points and uh, how the system works. So good insight into what could potentially occur here. And uh, we have to see a pretty high-level run from Masuyama right now if he's going to want to beat a 93. We know that he's capable of it. We know that he's very um, precise in his driving. He's aggressive. He just needs to put it all together in the way that Yanagwita just did. Um, being very precise with the, the zones, having that angle, minimal corrections, if any at all, big transition. So he's got to get a high-level score from each judge. So that means not making any mistakes and putting the car in the right place, having a big angle. It's a lot to put all together in one run. So we'll see if he can do it here. Well, and he's off. No pressure, but a lot of pressure at the same time. Trying to push the young Yanaguida from the podium. Heading out to the first outside zone. Nice job there, big angle. And back around, more angle there. Very deep into the zone, almost going off. And he goes through that first inside clip a little bit offline. But overall, what was really stand out there, Ryan, at least from my perspective, was the really the threading of the needle on those first two outer zones and then also the big angle in those zones. Look how settled the car is as he's coming around. Very few corrections from the front wheels. He's coming through to outside zone one now. A high level of angle there. Good rotation to a high level of angle as well off a little bit on inside clip one but very precise on all the zones where uh, the major points are especially one and two which are worth 10 points each so now it is in your guys's hands collectively ryan andy and robbie nishida so from the line perspective only one point deducted all right so you're starting to see a little bit of a trend here again yanaguida oh boom 96, not even close. A three-point increase from Yana Guida and Wataru Masuyama has proven from run number one to run number two to be the most consistent and best driver out there. And that means for Andrew Gray, for Miyoshi, Minawa, Yamashita, and Mad Mike Widet, they are going to have to get higher than a 96. So he has really put it out there. And uh, Yoshitaka Algune is our next driver up who had a 70 on his first run and he is going to come up a little bit short on that first outside zone the second outside zone a little bit better there and wrapping his way through the last section of the course that final outside zone it's not your number one qualifying run but and he is also at least somewhat safely uh, in to the top 32 with a 70. So as you see him getting to angle here, doing a good job of um, maintaining that angle but not getting the line appropriately wide there at outside zone one. Did a good job on outside zone two, got the tire right on the edge of the pavement, pretty close to inside clip one and right on the Roma strip to outside zone three. So definitely oh, having a problem there through outside, outside zone one, which again, really tough to get that right. Uh, but he did a fairly good job overall, just lacking an angle as you can see there from the angle judge. Well, he did his job there. He got himself a 78. He's safe. And uh, as we were saying before we started that run, uh, for the number one qualifying contenders, the Andrew Grace of the world, Minowa, Yamashita, and Widet, it's a 97 or higher that has to happen. It's a near-perfect run that has to happen. Masuyama is going to walk away with it. Here we go, Andrew Gray really deep into that first outside zone with big angle, nice transition back around, goes off course but holds it together. The front wheels start to come back to neutral but he makes it look good. Obviously, it's going to be an increase on his first run. He may have pushed a little bit too hard, Ryan, on outside zone number two, but let's take a look at this replay here. Yeah, that's always the challenge, is pushing right to the edge of the envelope but not beyond it. That's the hard part here. So as you see him coming to outside zone one, he does drop a tire off the off the rumble strip. Same thing here, just barely over the edge. 
like you said, the angle reduced there at inside clip one as he was going a little bit wide, but manages to uh, to salvage it and stays on the appropriate line through outside zone three. So no doubt in my mind that it's going to be higher than an 83, even with those deductions. There was obviously a lot of commitment there. He had big angle, still a lot of fluidity. I, I think maybe you'll you'll probably deduct him up maybe a handful of points, Ryan, maybe yes. three, four points, something like that. You got it. Um, yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen. All right, so a 90 for Andrew Gray. He puts himself up there in the top five. And uh, his campaign is over for today. This driver here definitely needs to up his game. Hayato Miyoshi, four in points right now. He has a 63. So he needs to get rid of that 63 here. Let's see what he can do. He's probably outside the bubble right now. Yeah, we've got 35 scores, so that can drop potentially. And this does look like the Ebisu Miyoshi here. Much better, a lot more fluid. He was committed from the get-go, and so this is definitely going to be an improvement there. You can just tell by what we've seen and how you guys have scored these runs so far. And uh, I have to imagine it's going to be enough to get him up into a comfortable position. I believe you are correct. So, initiation by the three cone. Maintaining angle through there. He had a little adjustment there on angle, but line-wise, not doing too bad. Got right to the edge of the pavement on outside zone two. Pretty close on inside clip one, and right on the rumble strip through outside zone three. So overall, pretty smooth run. Putting the car uh, pretty much where it needs to be throughout the run. So good job from him. All right, well, we are two hours and a half into qualifying. We've got four drivers left to go. Excuse me, three drivers left to go. As an 84 is what Hayato Miyoshi drops, getting himself way above the marker. It's the cutoff line. Jump, but... And a big jump for him. All right, so here we go. The, the driver that was much talked about at Ebisu, Oichi Yamashita. Excuse me, Shinji Manoa, he was also talked about. <laughs> An 88 on run number one. Early initiation. Really getting out there. And nice job right on that white line. Woo, nice transition background, but he's early. Oh, takes some angle out of the car. It was a, a really impressive initi or transition to outside zone two, but a bit too early, and that yeah. uh, caused him to tighten up on that first inside clip. Too early with too much angle for the line that he was carrying through there. It sent him inside very aggressively after he rotated the car. But you can tell it was a little bit early. Um, so watch here. He gets out to the white line, just over the white line. As he rotates, huge angle. But unfortunately, just took him way too far inside. Um, missed outside zone two for the most part, and uh, kind of had an uh, early line coming into inside clip one. All right, so he had a solid score on his first run in 88. I'm going to say no, but maybe. I think it was a big big mistake. Yes, it was. I think it's going to hurt him. I'm going to say 82. Okay, look at that, 80. All right, 80. So he's going to stick with that first score. And now we come to Koichi Yamashita. And uh, he is also fine as far as qualifying is concerned. So it's really now about positioning for him. He always has an opportunity to shoot for that number one spot, but it's really about moving himself up the ladder, give himself the best bracket. Here we go. Nice early initiation. Headed out to that first outside zone, right past that white line. Decent angle. Smooth here. A little bit of movement in the front wheels, just taking away some of the impact of the overall run there on the second half. But it was uh, pretty solid overall. And, and Ryan, I think, just judging by what we've seen, I think it's going to be above an 81. It's not going to be your number one qualifier, but uh, it's a, probably a, a solid, decent score. Yeah, it's a big jump, four-point jump for me online from his first run. Did a good job of putting the car where he needed to put it. Uh, like you said, he had a little adjustment right there on angle, but overall a pretty smooth run. It looked pretty committed. It didn't look like a lot of uh, problems with fluidity, just that slight bobble at inside clip one. But overall, I think it'll be a pretty high score. There you go. 94, so it is not only high, it is one of the top that we've seen all day. So the judges awarding him 
even with a couple of those little mistakes, obviously the line very much part of the role here. Now, Mad Mike Wudet, our last driver of the day. He's got a 78. He's safe, but he does not want to be outdone by Wataru Masuyama. This is his last chance to do it. He needs a 97. Can it be done? Nope. It's over. Just that right there takes it out. It's not going to be a number one qualification. Are we seeing a bit of a change in the approach from Mad Mike Widet here, or is this just a matter of not having the vehicle prepared and ready to go? We usually see him in our top three qualifiers, and uh, it may not be it today. He's got a 78 on run number one. Ryan, how are you judging this year on run number two? Yeah, off outside zone one, about the same as he was on run one. Dropped a tire on outside zone two and then uh, wasn't as wide on outside zone three as, as we've seen a lot of drivers be. And it's uh, a little surprising for Mike. He's had a couple of perfect uh, rounds, I think, this, this, this season where he got first in qualifying and then won the event. So not going to happen this time in terms of the qualifying, at least, with a score of 80. So unofficially, your number one qualifier is Wataru Masuyama, who was the most consistent of the afternoon, a 92 on run number one, a 96 on run number two. That is it for us today. Join us tomorrow, 8.30, Japan Standard Time for Top 32. Then we will have a short break, and we'll be back here at noon for Top 16. This is the G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan Championship here at the Uber famous Fuji Speedway. Ryan Sage, Ryan Lontane will be back with you tomorrow, and uh, that is it, it for us wrapping it up today. Yes. Thanks for uh, your great commentary today, Ryan. <laughs> Just trying to be like you, man. <laughs> Very funny. See you guys later. Bye bye.